In the early 2000s, Santillan immigrated from Veracruz in Mexico and taught in elementary schools. Then she became a parent, and that in part led her to create this preschool community. Seeing my child's needs made me feel that I had to step up and take on the challenges of being a parent, uh, an immigrant, and having to meet my child's needs. Then I learned that I was not the only parent in that situation. There is many like me. Santillan focuses on developing the whole child, which is why Katie LeBlanc chose her preschool. She's growing compassionate children. She's, you know, teaching curious children. And she's teaching them things like social justice, environmentalism, art, dance, sports. And she has, uh, you know, bring, brought the forest to her, her backyard. LeBlanc says when she caught pneumonia this recent winter, Santillan volunteered to transport her son to and from school. So without that support, I don't even know if I would have recovered this fast. When she got better, she said she went back to work, reassured that her son was under the care of someone who's like family. For Here and Now, I'm Daisy Wynn. And Here and Now is a production of NPR and WBUR. I'm Robin Young of Boston. And I'm Scott Tong in Washington, D.C. This is Here and Now. comes from the Museum of Science in Boston, providing pre-K through grade 12 engineering curriculum. From we engineer to engineering the future, with teacher guides, storybooks, kits, and videos, all designed to fuel dynamic STEM education. More at MOS.org. It often feels nowadays like almost every door has been closed to women in Afghanistan. So a few colleagues and I traveled across the country to speak to women of all walks of life and try to understand how they were experiencing all of the changes over the last several months. I'm Sabrina Tavernisi. That's today on The Daily from The New York Times. Support for Radio IQ comes from Dominion Energy Center, presenting NPR's Wait, Wait stand-up tour, live at Richmond's Carpenter Theater, June 16th. Tickets and information at dominionenergycenter.com. Radio IQ is broadcasting in digital on WVTF Roanoke, WRIQ Charles City, Richmond, WURV Richmond, WVTU Charlottesville, WVTW Charlottesville, WVTR Marion. WISC FM Wise, WQIQ Spotsylvania, WIQR Lexington, WEHC Emory, WLUR Lexington, and in Richmond on 92.5 and Fredericksburg on 94.9. Radio IQ, a service of Virginia Tech. Good afternoon and welcome to the 2 o'clock p.m. session of City Council. 
And I'll ask our clerk to please call the roll. Mr. Vollison. Here. Ms. Moon Reynolds. Here. Ms. Sanchez Jones. Here. Mr. Pretty. Here. Vice Mayor Cobb. Here. Ms. And White Boyd. And here. Mayor is away. <laughs> <laughs> the Mayor will join us shortly. Uh, the invocation this afternoon will be delivered by the Reverend Terry Kemp, uh, Children's Pastor and Ministries Director of Fort Chiswell Church of God, and then I will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Will you please stand? Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for this day and your abundant goodness given to each of us. Again, we thank you for this opportunity to serve this city and community with our talents and our abilities you've blessed us with. May we always put forth our best efforts and abilities for the benefit of this community and your glory. We ask your blessing on each member of this council and all of our city leaders and their responsibilities to present every citizen of this city in a professional and unbiased manner. We pray for wisdom, vis vision, and knowledge for your will to be accomplished. Let us acknowledge the importance of every viewpoint shared today and let us work united in our pursuit of achievement and not be divided by our differences. We pray for your divine inspiration for decisions made in this chamber today and in the days to come. Almighty God, we earnestly pray for you to keep your protective hand over the citizens of our city and the adjoining communities. May the Holy Spirit lead each of us into a greater accomplishments as the city of Roanoke continues to be a leading example of civic pride, progress, and partnership. May each of us approach our daily responsibilities with integrity, a desire for excellence, and a continual effort for unity that will benefit the citizens of this great city for years to come. In your name we pray, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Reverend Kemp. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you that the Council of the City of Roanoke is seeking applications for various vacancies on council appointed authorities, boards, commissions, and committees. Uh, and that's more than just a cliche that we say every week. We want citizens to come down and step up to serve on a number of boards and committees. And it's an easy process. All you have to do is to contact our clerk's office or you can access the city's website at www.buenoba.gov to complete an online application. So we really want our citizens to be a part of our government and that's an opportunity for you. So please take advantage of this opportunity. And again, if you have any questions, just call the clerk's office, and they'll be able to guide and direct you through this process. All right, now we're down to presentations and acknowledgments, and I'm going to call on and ask uh, Vice Mayor Joe Cobb to join me at the podium. We have a couple of proclamations. I'm going to turn this over to Vice Mayor Duke Cobbs and uh, 
and his distinguished colleagues on council. Thank you, Mayor. All right. Good afternoon, colleagues and citizens. Uh, it's my honor to present uh, the following procl proclamation for Pride Month. Whereas Roanoke is a welcoming and compassionate city that embraces the diversity of our residents, including our LGBTQ plus community, in which lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, and ally citizens have been part of Roanoke's history since its beginning, and a visible community formed here in the 1960s, anchored by the region's first known gay bar, the Trade Winds, which opened on Franklin Road in 1953. Whereas the first gay liberation organization in the city, the Gay Alliance of the Roanoke Valley, also known as GARV, was founded in 1971 and was followed in 1977 by the Free Alliance for Individual Rights, FAIR, with both organizations advocating against the harassment of gay men by bar owners and law enforcement. Whereas transgender Roanokers became increasingly visible in the 1970s, and a group of trans women attempted in the late 1970s to organize the region's first chapter of Tri-S, a pioneering national trans organization. And in late 1978, the park, which today is the only nightclub that remains from that era, opened to rave reviews. In 1980, lesbians in Roanoke formed their own organization, First Friday, and the annual Roanoke Valley Women's Retreats. Whereas the AIDS crisis hit Roanoke hard, with the first local death from AIDS reported in 1983, gay activist groups such as the Blue Ridge Lambda Alliance and the Roanoke Valley chapter of the Virginia Gay Alliance organized the earliest AIDS advocacy and care work, as did the Metropolitan Community Church of the Blue Ridge. Out of these efforts emerged the Blue Ridge AIDS Support Services and the Roanoke AIDS Project. Today, the drop-in center of the Council of Community Services carries on this important work in our community. Whereas in 1990, a coalition of gay and lesbian groups formed the Alliance of Lesbian and Gay Organizations, and in September of that year, they put on the city's first Pride Festival in Wasina Park. In September 2000, an anti-gay shooting at the Backstreet Cafe on Salem Avenue took the life of one person, Danny Overstreet, and wounded six others. This hate crime shook the city and opened a new chapter in our LGBTQ history. Whereas the 21st century has witnessed the emergence of new organizations and initiatives, including the founding of the Ladies and Gents of the Blue Ridge Transgender Alliance in 2007, the growth of Roanoke Pride and the Pride in the Park Festival, the formation of Youth Saga and PRISM Foundation supporting LGBTQ youth, the region's first LGBTQ plus community center, the Roanoke Diversity Center, in 2013, the founding of Diversity Camp in 2014, creation of our first uniquely black LGBTQ organization, the House of Expression, in 2019, and Southwest Virginia Pride in 2022. Whereas Roanoke is a place where the LGBTQ plus community can live, love, work, and play. Now, therefore, I, Joseph L. Cobb, Vice Mayor, on behalf of Sherman P. Lee Sr., Mayor of the City of Roanoke, do hereby proclaim June 2023 throughout this great seven-time All-America City as Pride Month. And Kenny Young from the Roanoke Diversity Center here is here to receive the proclamation. I would just say, uh, you know, I'm very excited about uh, Pride Month. I think all of us are, um, and the great work that the Roanoke Diversity Center does to make sure that uh, there's a safe space here in Roanoke for everyone. Um, and, you know, this is such a great, uh, our city has gone through a lot of LGBTQ history in its time, um, and it's so great to now have uh, three members of the community here on city council to be able to uh, partake in this proclamation. I just want to uh, say thank you to the city of Roanoke for um, celebrating Pride this month and for continuing to celebrate it. Uh, I think as we're seeing in other parts of the United States, um, corporations, for whatever reasons, either fear or otherwise, 
who are taking steps away um, not to celebrate this month, that that is a step in the wrong direction. Um, I'm proud that the city started doing this a few years ago. I'm glad that we had Vice Mayor Cobb lead the way being elected in 2018. Um, and just while, you know, Joe, Peter, and I may be up here on council. We are just a, a small sector of the community, and we do not represent all that is out there. That's why today, as you see pride flags, you'll see the progress pin, which represents how diverse our community is, how inclusive we need to be, and to make sure that anyone out there recognizes that we are just three white cisgender um, men, that there is a space for representation for them up there, and it's up to them to come and claim it. I also want to take just a moment to recognize the life of Mary Binky. Mary was a longtime resident of Roanoke. Uh, she passed away recently. There was a service of celebration for her life uh, at the Unitarian Church a couple weekends ago. But Mary was an early advocate um, for transgender rights. Um, having a family member who was transgender, she edited a book and made that accessible to families who were uh, going through that transition to help them better understand the value uh, of and, and health and well-being of their transgender children and siblings. And um, Mary also was instrumental in expanding PFLAG's work to include the transgender community. So she lived well into her 90s and was an advocate to the very end. And I just wanted to make sure that we have a moment in this Pride Month to give thanks for her life and legacy. So thank you all. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Good pull up photo. Yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> One more. One, two, and there you go. One, two, and three. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right. Back to work. <laughs> All right. Uh, is Katie Kennedy here? Come on down. And anybody else that you want to be with? Right. I have a proclamation that will declare June 2023 20, as Healthy Homes Month. And I'm pleased to be joined here by uh, this group of young ladies. And uh, Katie, I'll let you have a word. I'm going to read the proclamation. I'm going to ask you to have some word and introduce these special ladies here. All right. Healthy Homes Month. Whereas the month of June is national. Healthy Homes Month, and the theme this year is Connecting Home, Health, and You. Whereas since 2014, the Department of Housing and Urban Development and the Office of Lead Hazard Control and Healthy Homes has used National Healthy Homes Month to educate public health and housing professionals policymakers, and the general public about the issues important to healthy homes. Whereas home health and safety hazards, including physical safety hazards, lead-based paint, radon, mold, and pests cause or contribute to a wide range of illnesses and diseases, including lead poisoning, asthma, cancer, and injuries. Whereas lead poisoning affects hundreds of Roanoke's children under six, whereas the unintentional falls and accidents in the home are common and hurt many Roanoke residents each year, whereas radon is prevalent in many homes in Roanoke and is the second leading cause of lung cancer. Whereas many Roanoke families and households 
are unaware that their homes can have serious health hazards, they are preventable. And whereas Healthy Homes Month creates public awareness about how housing impacts health and empowers families to take action to protect themselves from home hazards. Now, therefore, I, Sherman P. Lee, Sr., Mayor of the City of Roanoke, Virginia, do hereby proclaim the month of June 2023 throughout this great seven-time All-America city as Healthy Homes Month. All right. And at this time, I'm pleased to recognize uh, Ms. Katie Kennedy for this presentation. Okay. Right here. Thank you. I'm um, Katie Kennedy. I work with Let's Safe Roanoke and Healthy Homes Roanoke. And actually, I'm going to pass the mic over to Helen and Angela because I think that they can tell you a little bit more uh, about Healthy Homes Month and why it's so important to us. But we are um, really working to work together in private um, public partnerships to provide um, ho housing rehab and um, resources to the, all the families in the city of Roanoke. Uh, so I'll let them tell you a little bit more. Good afternoon. Um, Healthy Homes Roanoke is really important to the city of Roanoke. So Healthy Homes Roanoke actually started a couple years ago, and um, we are just excited about Healthy Homes Month this year. We actually started, uh, two, we did two things this year, so to start, kick off the month, we um, relaunched our Facebook page, so you can find Healthy Homes Tips at Healthy Homes Roanoke on Facebook, and we also launched the partnership website, which is healthyhomesroanoke.org, um, which actually is, has links to all of the collaborative partners, which which includes rehab partners who actually receive um, funding from the Healthy Homes Production of Grant, which the city of Roanoke received. And so you can find the links to their websites to apply for funding um, to get your home rehabbed, as well as find links to all of our private um, partners there, such as Carillion and Roanoke Gas and Freedom First Credit Union, and lots of interesting stories and resources as well. So we're really excited for Healthy Homes Month and a chance to really um, highlight our partners and the Healthy Homes tips that are available and a chance to make um, housing in Roanoke a lot healthier. Good afternoon. I'm Angela Penn with Total Action for Progress. I'm happy to be here uh, this afternoon, thankful that our agency is a part of the Healthy Homes Partnership and that we are able to collaborate with other partners uh, such as Renovation Alliance, um, Blue Ridge, uh, to work together to provide healthy solutions for those homeowners within the city of Roanoke. So we're just proud to be a part of this partnership. And thank you for the funding that is provided to allow us to do the work. Thank Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Andrew. All right, any questions for members of council before we do the photo op? Good work. Thank you, Thank you for all that information, too. All right. Yes. Thank you. Mayor, if you could just go to the. Yeah. Me? Away from the podium. No, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Councilwoman White Board, I take a lot of these. Do they ever? I don't ever see any of them. I, you know what? I actually do it quite as I take them, send them to Carol, and, and, they, and she does post them. She does. She posts them on our community engagement page, and um, she does an excellent job. We have a new clerk this afternoon, Mr. C. <laughs> way up. Uh, Madam Clerk, are we down to the Hearn of Citizens Upon Public Matters? Yes. I want to thank you. City Council 
sets this time as a priority for citizens to be heard. All matters will be referred to the city manager for a response, recommendation, or report to council as he may deem it appropriate. Uh, Madam Clerk, has anybody signed? Yes, we have about 10 speakers. How many? About 10. 10? I was, yes, I was counting. <laughs> okay. Uh, please call them in the order that they signed up. Uh, Frida Cathcart. Owen McGuire. Deborah Carter. Shelly Himmel, Linda Craig, not yet. Yes, I'm just trying to see if everyone's here. Mark Farrow, Curtis Tolley, Deborah Saunders. Reverend David Denham, Denham. He's here. Okay, that's it. First speaker, Frida Cathcart. All right. Welcome, Frida. Thank you. I wanted to acknowledge that June 18th is Father's Day, and my father's been on my mind a lot. He died last year. I was blessed with a loving and caring father, and he was a lot of fun. He taught me how to dance by standing on his feet and he'd lift me up into the air and hold me over his hand, and I would feel like I was flying, and he'd toss me and catch me and gently put me down on the ground. He was also firm. Um, when I went off to college, he um, gave me a check so I could open my own banking account, which I did, and I went around shopping afterwards. What I didn't know was they were going to hold that check for 10 days because it was out of state, and so my checks bounced all over the place, and suddenly I was broke. So I called Daddy and said, I don't have any money. And he said, well, are you in the dorm room? And I said, yes. Do you, and you have food in the cafeteria? And I said, yes. And he said, but you'd like money to go out and have fun. And I said, yes. And he said, get a job. <laughs> he was always telling me that he loved me and he was proud of me and he believed I could do anything I set my mind to. But the only time he told me that I can recall that my grandfather was proud of me was when I was defending my shareholder resolution at Berkshire Hathaway in front of Warren Buffett and 44,000 shareholders. My grandfather was a great man. And the Depression, he left South Carolina and went to New York City and worked, started off working in the mailroom. From the mailroom, he worked his way up through the company to become the CEO of Gen Re, the North America's largest reinsurance company. He was one of Nixon's first economic advisors to China when they opened up China. Um, one of the things that my grandfather impressed upon my father, that, was pressed, that he impressed upon his children, was don't tell me what you've accomplished, tell me who you've helped. How have you made a difference in your family and community to make the world a better place? It was in that spirit that I worked with Ronnie Sutton to submit a proposal to um, the city to consider on um, renovating the cabin and um, putting the parkland and Fishburne Park under conservation. I was thinking about who could I help and how we could make a difference. And that in that mind, we wanted to support nonprofits, protect a historic building, and conserve parkland. So that was the spirit in which that proposal was submitted, even though I know that you're not soliciting proposals at this time. I wanted to tell you what was the motivation behind it? Even though they've gone beyond, I still want to do my best that my grandfather and my father would be proud of the legacy that they left behind for me and that I can make a difference in my family and in my community to help others. So thank you for this time. Thank you. Next speaker, Owen McGuire. Council members, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Uh, as president of the Grand Court Neighborhood Association, I wanted to present you with this thank you card that's been signed 
by over 50 of our neighbors uh, who lived near the park. They were very relieved and happy that you voted to protect Fishburn Park. I want to talk briefly about uh, Blair Fishburn. Uh, I gave you all a copy of an article from 1935, The Run of Times, where he donated 25 acres to the Fishburn Park. Mr. Fishburne was probably the greatest benefactor in Roanoke history. He was an accomplished businessman and a bank executive that helped guide the Roanoke through its remarkable growth of the early 20th century. After all that, he still found, found time to serve Roanoke as a councilman, a mayor, and even as a delegate for Roanoke and Richmond. Mr. Fishburne could have concentrated on developing Roanoke land solely for commercial and residential use. He probably would have increased his personal wealth substantially. Instead, he took a keen interest in creating, when he could, preserving local land for use as public parks for all of our citizens. I'm going to refer to some of this article. I'm not going to read it verbatim, but what I think is important. The mayor at the time, 1935, was Sidney Small, and he said, quote, very material, very material contributions to the, to the playground and recreation facilities of Roanoke and promised that the council would develop the property as a park with all possible speed be expressed the appreciation of the council and assured Mr. Fishburne that his gift would be used as he intended. That property, coupled with a small adjoining tract known as Weaver Park, will be called Fishburne Park. Mr. Fishburne said, I'm doing this, well, let me jump over that, because of an intense interest in parks and recreations, he had been considering such a gift for a long time. He revealed that he had just acquired the property. He just went out and bought it, and now he turns around and gives it to the city, tw almost 25 acres. He'd been connected with the public life in Roanoke for a great many years as and has always been interested in park. He was instrumental in uh, getting Mr. Fallon to... Uh, donate 30 acres for Fallon Park. But the big thing I couldn't ever understand was where did Weaver Park, why did Weaver sell to the city? Well, he said he was instrumental, he being Mr. Fishburne, in convincing Mr. Weaver uh, to deed the park to the city. And so he, then he added to it with his 25 acres. Finally, all I'd like to say, as the final defense, you are the, are the custodians and stewards of our public parks. You have chosen to continue Mr. Fishburne's vision. Many people in the city are very appreciative, and I believe Mr. Fishburne is smiling down on you today. Thank you. Deborah Carter. Mayor, members of council. My name is Deborah Carter. I live in Northwest Roanoke. I'm here on behalf of the hundreds of people from across the city who have signed these thank you cards for protecting our parkland, including Pastor Dwight Steele of Pil Pilgrim ba Baptist Church, Reverend Dr. Amy Hodge with AME Mount Zion, and Sheriff Antonio Hash. We greatly appreciate your voting to not rezone Fishburn Park. It's important to have access to, park, to parks for people's physical and mental health. As the city becomes more developed, our parks and green spaces become more and more valuable. The people of Roanoke are relying on council to protect our interest. Parks and green spaces help keep our city cooler, which literally saves people's lives during heat waves and reduces energy cooling bills for residences and businesses. Your vote not to rezone Fishburne Park was also in, in alignment with the city's comprehensive plan. We just wanted to let you know how much we appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Did somebody take a photograph? I'm the photographer. <laughs> <laughs> we do appreciate you. The Parks and Recreation Advisory Board does too. 
Thank you. Okay. Come on okay. up. Okay. 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 I'm going to give you a count of three. One, two, three. One, two, three. I think I got it. You want me to send it to you for you? Sure. Thank you so much. Next speaker is Shelly Himmel. Linda Craig. Thank you, City Council and Mayor Lee, for all you've done for me since I spoke to you the last time I was here over, over a year ago. Um, <laughs> I have some new things to say that I didn't have to say last time. It was April 18th, 2022. That was when I spoke to City Council. And uh, after that, the next day, or that was April 18th of 2022, I spoke to City Council, and uh, I was hoping I could come back and speak again, but something intervened, and uh, I wound up in Catawba Hospital for seven months from uh, April 23rd, 2022 to uh, November 22nd, 2022, when I I got discharged from Catawba. I uh, pray, uh, praise God because uh, He helped me when I was when I was very uh, in need. And also, the the people who have helped me the most. I, I want to thank uh, everyone who's helped me. And uh, the council said to me the last time I was here, "Tell us how we can help you." Well, at that point, I didn't know what to say, but I was a guest at the rescue mission. I, I, I came uh, today to say that I'm, I'm speaking on behalf of four uh, special interest groups, the elderly, the disabled, the mentally ill, and the homeless. It's four categories of people who need so much help. And uh, I'm not homeless now. Thank God I, I, have, an, I have a home. But... When I was here the other time, I was homeless. And uh, so things can change for the better. I think um, my life is, a, is an example of how things can get better, which I, I wasn't satisfied with just a mediocrity. I, I try to be a success instead of a failure. I think I can't afford to fail. And uh, so uh, success is what I'm striving for and anything that I feel is something I, I should be doing. And uh, so when I was here last last year, uh, I told Sherman Lee that I voted for him in, in the election, and he told me he'd have to take care of me. But, of course, I guess you thought, what happened to Miss Craig? What We saw her here, but we haven't seen her back for a while. Well, I was, you know, you know how things go when, when you try to do something to help someone, things, uh, there's always an obstacle somewhere that you have to get over or... Go ahead, go ahead and finish. Uh, all right. Uh, I, I feel like uh, the, the prodigal son in the Bible, where the prodigal son came home after he was in the far country and couldn't get any help there, he decided to come home to his family, his father, who would give him food and place to stay. And uh, I'm staying at Meadow Hills Assisted Living now. I, I told people at Catawba that I, wanted, I think I might as well just go to a nursing home, but I'm 74 now. I'm, I turned 75 this year in November, but uh, I, I was told in, in Catawba that I don't need a nursing home. So anyway, uh, the elderly people, the population, of, of the whole world, I, I think each country has its policy about older people. 
especially those who no longer can give anything uh, to the betterment of society. Some of us, uh, we, we're not welcome in some places. And uh, I, I couldn't go to uh, La Our Lady of the Valley. Uh, I couldn't go to Friendship Manor. So things were uh, against me saying, um, Our Lady of the Valley said they, they wouldn't take me because they thought I might walk off and not come back and they wouldn't know what happened to me because I've done that before too. But uh, And then Friendship Manor said I couldn't stay there because I didn't have, my income was too low and I, I couldn't afford to pay the rent. And also, uh, I have a criminal record. I'm a, I'm a convicted felon. I've been convicted of four felonies in, in my uh, life. So anyway, I'm here to, to ask the council and everyone, anyone who, who is interested to look into what we can do for the, for the homeless and the mentally ill. I know Sam Rasool, the member of House of Delegates, he had a town, a town hall meeting in uh, April of 2000. 22, and I was there. It was the day after I addressed city council, and I was hoping that we could help Catawba Hospital, which is in Roanoke County, uh, to get to get some money to help the people there who who are just you know sometimes we're just hanging on by a thread, and we feel like nobody cares, and we just don't know which way to go. We don't know which way to turn, and uh, that can be very disconcerting. It can be discouraging also. And I go to church, I go to Greater Love Church on Loudoun Avenue with the Reverend Reggie Hamlet as a pastor. I was in church yesterday, and we had a great message from the Bible. So I think that uh, we, we ought to realize that we, if we try to accomplish a, a goal for improving conditions and don't consider what the Bible says, we might and not be completely uh, <coughs> taking in all the possibilities and don't limit what what we can do just because somebody doesn't understand the Bible or doesn't want anything to do with it. So, uh, you know, I, I'm i just thankful today that I'm still living. I don't know if I see my sister. I have a half-sister. She lives in Alexandria, Virginia. She's up there now. She was in Florida last winter. My, my half-sister, that's the only sibling I have, she's 83 years old. I'm 74. I'll be 75 in November, but my sister's 83, and she's doing a whole lot better than I'm doing. She can drive. I don't drive anymore, but uh, I'm kind of glad I don't because I, I never was a good driver. And so uh, things like this, you know, we have to adjust and adapt to things that are changing that we, we can't always control. And some things are out of our, out of our control. And so uh, I, I wanted to thank everyone here for the work you're doing. Don't let it uh, get you down if you, uh, if you have a bad day or if something goes wrong. We have to be strong, and we have to continue to, to, uh, to fight this battle because it, it's necessary. If we don't, we will be defeated. I think defeat is not an option. We have to win. And I, I'm proud of Roanoke because Roanoke is where I, I was born at Carillion, Roanoke Memorial Hospital, uh, uh, 1948. It was a lot smaller then, the building over there. <laughs> and so I, I want to also thank uh, the people who uh, work in the public works, like uh, the people that drive the ambulances, the EMS Red, red and white ambulances that go answer calls of people in an emergency. And I want to thank those also who, who are firefighters and fighting fires and stuff like that, because without them, things would be a whole lot worse. And we, we need uh, to pray also. And so I, I want to thank everyone here for what you're doing. You just continue. And uh, it said, I heard someone say, uh, Stick to the fight when you're the hardest hit. It's when things are at their worst that you must not quit. So just to remember, uh, there is a there is a blessing in 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 um, what we're doing, and God does care. 
so wanted to share that. Thank you for letting me share. All right. Thank you. Curtis Tolley. Evening. My name is Curtis Talia. I live at 510 Dell Avenue Southeast. There's an abandoned house next door to my house. It's been abandoned for a long time now. There's a lot of people that goes over there. They're urinating over there. Every day I look out my kitchen window and fixing coffee, I see people over there urinating. I've called the police over there about 25 times. I've called uh, city code enforcement. I don't know how many times. And now I'm coming up here to the city council with my problem because nobody else wants to seem to work at it or fix it or nothing. There's kid gets on kid, uh, school buses, they see people urinating over there. There's women goes up there, well, ladies goes up there and the, the ladies, females goes up there in the weeds, using the bathrooms all the time. They trash up my yard. They done, almost caught that house on fire five times now. And then tore down my fence six times. Uh, I've had all I can take of it. I've done everything in my power. People around the neighborhood come up to me and say, hey, CT, when are we going to do something about this? Well, you know, my hands are only tied so much. We want to start our own neighborhood watch group. I've asked the police how we do this. Nobody will tell me. So I'll come to the city council to try to get this solved. Well, thank you. Mr. Uh, Tully, what, is, what was the address of the vacant I live house? at 510 Dell Avenue. Yeah, the house. That the is house there. is 502 Dell Avenue. Thank you. I mean, just this weekend, they almost caught it on fire. My neighbor come running down the street saying, hey, CT, they're catching that house on fire again. This makes the fifth time we've had a fire department down there. Well, thank you for coming to council and... Uh, our city manager will follow up on that, what you just said, to look into that. I sure would appreciate it, and everybody in our neighborhood appreciate it, too. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mark Farrow. Mayor Lee, Vice Mayor Cobb, Honorable Council, my name is Mark Farrow. I'm a visitor to your city, uh, so I'm hopefully I... It's appropriate for me to speak. Um, we uh, are hosting or co-hosting the Violent Crime Conference at the Hotel Roanoke. Um, we had to make a decision this year on where we were going to host it, and we said, "Well, let's go back to Roanoke." Um, you know, it's been it's been good for us. Um, and several of us have noticed. Um, you know, when I'll say this: when I was when I was with the old guard, escort to the president, there was this uh, general who would sit with the privates, and uh, I asked my captain. I said, "Well," Why is he? Why is he sit with the privates? You know, and uh, he said because they'll tell him what's really going on. We're, we tell him what he wants to hear. Um, and so I came to tell you what's really going on uh, in the city from our perspective as visitors. Um, immediately we noticed uh, from the walk to from Roanoke or from the Hotel Roanoke to the city um, that things were different. They were. The scooters were lined up. The walkway, breezeway was clean. Uh, um, the homeless had, seemed to have a place to go. And I don't say that lightly um, because uh, years ago I found myself uh, homeless. And so, you know, I don't, I don't say that as a uh, uh, get a job kind of, of a statement. Um, I just, we just have all noticed um, that things are different. Um, and because of the field that we're in, we also know that you've seen um, that you've seen significant decrease in robberies um, this first quarter, and I think that that speaks to your efforts um, in the uh, crime reduction uh, arena. Uh, this month, uh, I've heard this month is this month and that month, but it is also uh, Gun Violence Awareness Month, and um, you know I just want to thank you for all the efforts that you've put forth over the last few years in building a foundation. Uh, to reduce gun violence here in Roanoke. I think that the efforts that you're, you're doing are working and they're helping. Um, the city looks better, it smells better, it, um, it's gonna attract business and a safe uh, city is good for business. So 
thank you for hosting us and for having us. We appreciate all your work and keep it up. Thank you. Deborah Saunders. Honorable Sherman Lee, the uh, council, thank you for letting me speak today. I promise it will be brief. Um, the main thing that I wanted to say today um, is concerning um, making changes. Uh, specifically, I'm addressing, can you all hear me? Uh, mm -hmm. Specifically, I'm addressing uh, rezoning, uh, not just at the Fishburn Park or uh, on Bramerton, but uh, change in general. Uh, I voted against it, of course, and uh, I can share with you why. Uh, I grew up um, in the country in a very rural area out on a farm, and we were basically poor. It was a lot of us, and um, what we did have a lot of was nature. So I learned from early on to appreciate nature, uh, to learn to survive in nature. So later on when I went in the Army, it was like second nature for me, you know, I love the nature when most people were complaining. I'm like, I felt at home. So I guess I say this to say that uh, I appreciate you all putting a pause on your decision uh, because change is good. I'd be the first one to advocate for change, but I go by the premise that if it's not broke, don't fix it. Uh, we have a lot to deal with here in Ronald, and you're dealing with it well, uh, especially on the crime nature and drugs and guns and killings and a park to me when I think of a park I think of nature I think of animals enjoying it and loving it as it is and people going there to enjoy it pretty much as it is it's not a hotel so I think when a person go to a park if they need a lot of stuff to sustain themselves you know if they need a restaurant and coffee pot, cure yourself a thermos, pack a lunch, and be content. That's what I think of when I think of a park. I don't think you need to be doing a lot of changes to make them enjoyable and pleasant uh, unless it's some kind of natural disaster going on like flooding or something like that. But basically when I think of our natural areas, our parks, we got a lot of parks in Roanoke. So, you know, I'm like, enjoy these things, be blessed, be glad we've got so many parks to choose from, but you don't always have to change and revise something unless it's absolutely necessary. So I thank you all for putting a pause on that and thinking about that more. Uh, even if you address it again in the future, just remember that, because um, I'm a lot older than a lot of you, so I can say that. And, uh, you know, when you grow up without a lot of stuff, you learn to appreciate stuff. So sometimes the things that people uh, consider to be so important, like coffee pots and restaurants, hey, we haven't always had all of these restaurants and coffee pots and things. So sometimes just go back to the basics. And if you're out there, i make it quick. If you're out there in nature, you already should be prepared. <laughs> You know, if you're going into nature, carry your stuff to sustain yourself like a snake bite kit, a good lunch and a thermos, and enjoy what's there because everything isn't meant to be revised. Thank you, Council. Continue doing your good work you're doing. Thank you for letting me speak. Thank you. The next speaker is Reverend David Denham. Greetings, council members. Thank you for your service. And I want to add Tree of Life Faith Community to the list of churches supporting uh, what's going and, and happening with Fishburn Park. I want to say a blessed and uh, well, pride month to all of you and, uh, and also a, a blessed Juneteenth celebration. And since I have the microphone, I just would like to add on Friday night, of Juneteenth week and the 16th, we will be honoring Negro League Baseball at the ballpark in Salem. Larry Legrand's wife will throw out the first pitch. His grandson, who is playing in the World Se College World Series, will also throw out a first ball. You'll have signs about the Roanoke Black Cardinals that many people do not know about. Anyway, it's time for us to know all that. 
I want to share with you an important uh, thing that with my encounter with the Fishburne Park uh, thing. Uh, I went to the Planning Commission meeting, and uh, that was the first time I had a chance to see Carrie Kid Van Blaircom. I'm not sure I pronounced her name correct. And, and, uh, and I spoke to that day, and as I always do late in the afternoon, I was walking through Fishburne Park with my dog. And uh, as I got to the back of the cottage, this was after the commission meeting meeting, there was a local TV station interviewing her. And I was going to be just, you know, okay, slither on. But I heard her say that most of the neighbors support what she has called to do. And I just leaned over and I said, well, not all the neighbors. <laughs> and, uh, and her face just got, mm, mm. And I said, oh, by the way, you'll be in a good position in a few years here to turn that property over and make a big profit. That frown went through a beaming face. That left me really concerned. I think it is important as a sacred trust to the city that the city council and the city maintain control of the property. Be nice to have, yes, something special at the cottage without a doubt, um, but maintain the control of the property. It's our sacred space, the park, so please. Amen. That was the last speaker. Okay. Thank you. All right, we're now down to item number four, which is the consent agenda. All matters listed under the consent agenda are considered to be routine by members of city council and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussions of the items if discussion is desired, the item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered separately. I need a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved the consent agenda. All right. Uh, Madam Clerk, we please call the roll. Mr. Vollison. Aye. Ms. Moon Reynolds. Aye. Ms. Sanchez Jones. Aye. Mr. Pretty. Aye. Vice Mayor Cobb. Aye. Ms. White Boyd. Aye. Mayor Lee. Aye. And the consent agenda is approved. We're now down to the regular agenda. Uh, number five is public hearings. We have none. Number six is petitions and communications. We have none. Uh, number seven is reports of city officers and comments of the city manager. Uh, Got a nun by here, but I don't, don't go by that, Mr. Cowell. Any yeah, no comment? No. Okay. All right, items recommended for action. Uh, the City of Roanoke Garland Branch Stream Restoration Project, accepting Department of Environmental Quality DEQ Award of Stormwater Local Assistance Program Funds. Authorizing execution of the Stormwater Local Assistance Fund Program grant agreement and appropriations of funds. There is a resolution. Move the resolution. Second. Uh, Madam Clerk, could you please read the title program? A resolution authorizing the acceptance of the Stormwater Local Assistance Fund grant to the City of Roanoke from the Virginia Department of Environmental Quality and authorizing city manager or his designee to execute any required grant agreements to execute any necessary additional documents to provide additional information and to take any necessary actions to receive, implement, administer such grant upon certain terms and conditions. All right. Is there any discussion by members of council? Hey, now, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Vollison. Aye. Ms. Moon Reynolds. Aye. Ms. Sanchez Jones. Aye. Mr. Pretty. Aye. Vice Mayor Cobb. Aye. Ms. White Boyd. Aye. Mayor Lee. Aye. And the resolution passes. There's a budget ordinance. So moved. 
Second. Madam Clerk, can you read the title paragraph? An ordinance appropriating funding from the Commonwealth of Virginia Department of Environmental Quality, amending and reordaining certain sections of the 2022-2023 stormwater fund appropriations, and dispensing with the second reading by title of this ordinance. All right. Uh, any discussion by members of council? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Vollison. Aye. Ms. Moon Reynolds. Aye. Ms. Sanchez Jones. Aye. Mr. Pretty. Aye. Vice Mayor Cobb. Aye. Ms. White Boyd. Aye. And Mayor Lee. Aye. And the budget, budget ordinance passes. Uh, I don't know, B is the recommendations of Human Services Advisory Board for funding of qualified agencies for the fiscal year 2023-2024. Mr. Mayor, I believe that Vice Mayor Bill Cobb has a state to read at this point. Yes, sir. I, Joseph L. Cobb, state that I have a personal interest in Agenda Item 71B regarding recommendations of Human Services Advisory Board for funding of qualified agencies for fiscal year 23-24 because I am serving as the Acting Director of Family Promise of Greater Roanoke from June 3rd to August 7th, and they are a recipient agency. Therefore, pursuant to Virginia Code Section 2.2-3112, I must refrain from participation in this matter. I ask that the city clerk accept this statement and ask that it be made a part of the minutes of this meeting. All right, so noted, thank you. All right, there is a resolution. Who's the resolution? Second. Uh, Madam Clerk, can you please read the title paragraph? A resolution approving the recommendations of the Human Services Advisory Board for allocation of city funds to various, various qualified agencies to assist such agencies in, in the performance of their programs for fiscal year 23 through 24 and authorizing the city manager or his designee to execute a contract with the Council of Community Services to perform the necessary performance audits to evaluate the effectiveness and efficiency of all the funded programs by such agencies. Thank you. Uh, are there any discussion from Council Member? Yeah, I just want to say uh, to the Human Services Advisory Board just to commend them on their work and their efforts. Uh, it's always a challenge to determine who gets what and how much, but I think this year they've done an excellent job trying to distribute the funds that we do have as equitably as they possibly can. And I just want to thank them for their efforts and their time because they are volunteers uh, who do this uh, to help us here uh, at the City of Roanoke. So I just wanted to commend them, Mayor for their hard work with that. Thank you. And Mr. Mayor, Any I Any other do, comments? Yes, Ms. thank you. Moon Reynolds? Yes, thank you. Uh, I just want to echo what uh, Council Member White Boyd said. It is a great process, and I do like, as in past years, that uh, the audit is being done by the Council of Community Services. But I do have a question, Bob, for you, or whoever could answer it. Um, I notice, as, as in, in most times when you're giving money away, uh, or allocated it rather, that some don't get as much as others. And I noticed that in some cases when I looked at the list, uh, it was cut down, way down on uh, some such as um, one in particular, I noticed uh, one was like $8,500 that they received in the past, but they got, uh, this year they had asked for 20, and then they only got 2,500. So I just want to know, with those uh, small amounts, will they still be able to uh, provide the services, perhaps, that they yeah. were and, uh, providing? Yes, and I'm, I'm glad you asked that question, because okay. that is one of the questions that they ask as they uh -huh. go through that process, because they don't want to provide funding that they can't actually use. Right. Sometimes that's actually why the, um, the dollar amount ends up being what it is, because it might be that you know they actually, um, a program might be able to make something work with half the money, but uh -huh. not with you know, a fourth of the money, and so they would get the half or otherwise. But yes, all of these folks, it's been verified that they can deliver some version of the service with the funds that have been Okay, awarded. that's what I just wanted to make sure of. They give them money they cannot perform. Sure. Yes, thank you. Thank you. All right, any other questions? 
Madam Clerk, I'm ready to call the roll. Mr. Vollison? Aye. Ms. Moon Reynolds? Aye. Ms. Sanchez Jones? Aye. Ms. Mr. Pretty? Aye. Ms. White Boyd? Aye. Mayor Lee? Aye. And the resolution passes. There's a budget order. So moved. Seconded. Madam Clerk, please read the title paragraph. An ordinance to transfer funding to, to specific human services committee agencies amending and reordaining certain sections of the 2023 through 2024 general fund appropriations and dispensing with the second reading by title of this ordinance. Thank you. Is there any discussion among members of council? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Vollison? Aye. Ms. Moon Reynolds? Aye. Ms. Sanchez Jones? Aye. Mr. Pretty? Aye. Ms. White Boyd? Aye. And Mayor Lee? Aye. And the budget ordinance passes. Item C is the adoption of an ordinance amending the electronic fee compendium for construction permits. There's an ordinance. Move the ordinance. Second. Madam Clerk, can you please read the <coughs> title paragraph? An ordinance amending and adopting the City of Roanoke's electronic fee compendium for the 2023-24 fiscal year to be maintained by the Director of Finance reflecting certain fees, rates, penalties, and charges made by the city, providing for an effective date, and dispensing with the second reading by title of this ordinance. All right, any discussion by members of council? Mr. Mayor, if I may, just to kind of clarify what this is. That, so the fees, that this really is dealing just with the planning and building development um, fees, charges that uh, were approved with the budget. Um, one, the staff went back and looked at some of the information that was included it was really difficult to decipher what fees were assigned to what category based on the formatting. So they reworked this, and that's what it is. So there are no changes in the fees. It's a change in the way in which the information is represented. All right, thank you. Right. Uh, Mr. Mayor, may I? Yes, uh, it, it, Thank you. This is just an observation because I'm a stickler for things like this, uh, where the measure just says, it, you know, it is amending and adopting. Uh, based on the uh, ad adoption of the one for May 8th that is in the report. I would just respectfully ask that uh, the report reflect that the measure that was adopted on May 8th was what is number 42643 uh, 050823 uh, and that uh, the um, I guess that the uh, document that was labeled as it states in this particular measure that it, that it be attached to the res I mean to the ordinance, and I went back to May 8th, and it was not. So I would ask if the clerk could include that uh, list of uh, I think you're calling it the Roanoke the 2024 City of Roanoke Electronic <coughs> Fee Compendium, and you reference it again in this particular ordinance that uh, it is attached. And I just well, I want to make certain that that is the case, that it will be included, so you don't have to go searching for it through the uh, reports trying to find it, that it would be accessible if you pull the ordinance. Will do. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Any further discussion? Hey, now, Madam Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Vollison. Aye. Ms. Moon Reynolds. Aye. Ms. Sanchez Jones. Aye. Mr. Pretty? Aye. Vice Mayor Cobb? Aye. Ms. White Boyd? Aye. And Mayor Lee? Aye. And the ordinance passes. Thank you. Item right, number D is the appropriation of Title 4-E, Federal Adoption Subsidy Funds and Acceptance of Revenue. There's a resolution. Move the resolution. Second. All right. Madam Clerk, please read the title paragraph. A resolution accepting the 2023 Title 4E Federal Adoption Subsidy Program grant funding from the Virginia Department of Social Services and authorizing the city manager or his designee to execute any required documents or furnish required information on behalf of the city necessary to accept such grant. All right. Any discussion by members of council? 
Mr. Mayor, if I may again just sort of explain what this is because Title IV uh, E doesn't tell you a whole lot about this. But um, so as you all know, and for many years, the, the city of Roanoke through our Department of Social Services has led the Commonwealth in facilitating adoption. So these are youth that are in our care um, under um, foster care program and then moving through adoption. Um, there comes a cost, obviously, with leading in that um, it's, it's a fairly expensive undertaking. We had, um, in this previous year, or in the current year, we had budgeted about $6.8 million. The cost is actually um, beyond that, and so that's what this amendment is, to add another $2.9 million, $2 million um, to address that, all of which is 100% um, re reimbursed from, from the state as well. But certainly also want to take this opportunity to uh, thank the, uh, the staff at DSS for the work that they do to facilitate this and our partners in the court system and others as well. So, um, but that's what this item is for. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, may I uh, ask the uh, manager a question with regards to what he just said, if yep. I could? And that yes. is, uh, going forward for the upcoming year, uh, did we budget more for it, uh, looking at it since we are the highest? Yeah, we, we kind of bud we budget based on what we expect the workload uh -huh. piece to be. Um, and that's what we've done, again, going into yeah. the next year. So it really just depends on how it um, moves through um, as we work through. So don't know. Don't know if we'll need, again, an adjustment next year or if it'll fit within the budget that we so have. So we budgeted uh, for uh, about uh, about uh, the same amount, uh, which is, uh, um, what did we budget uh, this year? Uh, yeah, about, I'm, not, uh, I'm not sure. I'm looking at here that you uh, exceeded the allocated amount of 6.8. So are you saying you just budgeted again 6.8, or did you go to about 10? We'll, we'll get the answer here. So. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Good afternoon. My name is Meredith Berger. I'm the Human Services Business Administrator. Uh -huh. Currently, um, we have an acting director, uh -huh. uh, um, Assistant City Manager Angela O'Brien, um, but I am prepared to answer any questions. Okay. We did budget both this year and next year 6.8 million. However, this is a mandated federal program, and uh -huh. as such, is reimbursed at 100%. So whatever we need to draw down from the feds and the state, we can do so at no cost, penny for penny. But you have to just wait on the reimbursement to come to you. It comes monthly. Monthly, okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right, any further discussion? Council, Madam Clerk, please call a roll on this resolution. Mr. Vollison. Aye. Ms. Moon Reynolds. Aye. Ms. Sanchez Jones. Aye. Mr. Pretty. Aye. Vice Mayor Cobb. Aye. Ms. White Boyd. Aye. And Mayor Lee. Aye. And the resolution passes. There's a budget ordinance. There's the budget ordinance. Second. Madam Clerk, please read the title paragraph. An ordinance to appropriate additional funding from 4E Adoption Subsidy Program for the Virginia Department of Social Services, amending and reordaining certain sections of the 2022-2023 General Fund Appropriations and dispensing with the second reading by title of this ordinance. All right. Any discussion by members of council? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Vollison. Aye. Ms. Moon Reynolds. Aye. Ms. Sanchez Jones. Aye. Mr. Pretty. Aye. Vice Mayor Cobb. Aye. Ms. White Boyd. Aye. And Mayor Lee. Aye. And the budget ordinance passes. Item number E is the acceptance and appropriation of the 2023 uh, AARP Community Challenge Demonstration Grant. There's a resolution. Move the resolution. Second. All right, Madam Clerk, could you please read the title paragraph? A resolution accepting the 2023 AARP Community Challenge Demonstration Grant Funds, approving a memorandum of understanding between the City of Roanoke and the AARP, and authorizing the City Manager or his designee to execute any required document required grant agreement and to execute such other documents necessary to effectuate, deliver, administer, and enforce the memorandum of understanding. Thank you. Is there any discussion by members of council? 
Ms. Moon Reynolds? I would just ask if the manager could <laughs> explain, <laughs> elaborate a little bit more yeah. on that, because there's so much good stuff in this under the considerations that I just thought yeah, it would be good for the public to hear what this is. A absolutely. Um, so after um, a few years of trying to secure a grant under this program unsuccessfully, um, Wayne Leftwich was able to actually um, uh, prevail this time in, in the request. So this is actually a collaboration between the city, the AARP, and the uh, Blue Ridge chapter of the American Institute of Architects. Um, so what this uh, will do is with this funding, it'll allow us, um, really allow the AIA um, chapter to actually host a design competition for accessory dwelling units. So as you know, a couple of years ago, the city approved accessory dwelling units as being permitted across the entire city. So think of the granny flats, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. um, and there's not been a lot of movement, a lot of traction in that. This is an effort to do a design competition that ultimately will result in um, pre-approved plans, if you will, for those uses that someone could take advantage of as we work our way through. So what will um, happen with that design competition is the one that is selected will be fully developed into the set of plans, and then there'll be a couple of others that will be further developed as well, and then those will be made available for people to be able to use. And again, that's only possible really through this collaboration with the local chapter um, of the American Institute of Architects. So thankful for that and looking forward to it. And I think it's actually, Wayne may know, I think it's a fairly fast, once they actually announce mm -hmm. um, officially, but fairly fast timeline for this work to occur. Is that yeah. Very good. So there'll be more information uh, coming out from it as well and stuff, but um, pretty exciting project. So. Yes, I saw in the report where it's uh, that you're going to be advertising it in late summer and it's going to run from September the 1st through the 30th. Uh, it's open to all who want to do the design, construction, and development. And uh, I was more interested in uh, once it's uh, reviewed and the drawings uh, um, uh, are done, that the layout of the a uh, of the uh, design book will go through. I mean, the production costs and all, and there will be an award event. Yep. So I thought that was yep. uh, to encourage others to participate to see if they can and get that uh, award, to get that five thousand dollars. Yeah, and there certainly yeah. will be more information about the competition yeah. as it as yeah. it moves forward and stuff yeah. as well. It's just the first step in that right. process. Right. I just wanted the public to know about yep. that. Mr. Thank Powell. you. Can I, can I just follow up with that? Would, um, so are the plans going to be available to individuals as well as uh, contractors and professionals? Or, yes, or the, the plans both. will be made publicly available for anyone. For anyone use, who so, wants to. Yes. Mm -hmm. And there'll be, you know, those plans will already have been tested against our building codes. So they'll meet the building code, all of those kinds of things. So everything will be done with them in order for someone to actually simply apply for the permit and, um, and then get the construction mm -hmm. moving. So. And if they have questions, they can contact Wayne Leverage for you. Uh, about Wayne, probably Wayne to start okay. with. And then once the competition comes mm -hmm. out, I think that uh, Catherine and others with the uh, planning department and the chapter will be able to have additional information. But start with Wayne if they have questions. Right. Yep. That's good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Madam Clerk, please call on. All right. Mr. Vollison. Aye. Ms. Moon Reynolds. Aye. Ms. Sanchez Jones. Aye. Mr. Pretty. Aye. Vice Mayor Cobb. Aye. Ms. White Boyd. Aye. And Mayor Lee. Aye. And the resolution passes. There's a budget ordinance. Move the budget ordinance. Second. Madam Clerk, please read the title paragraph. An ordinance to appropriate funding from AARP for Community Challenge Demonstration Grant with the purpose of supporting accessory dwelling unit design, amending and reordaining certain sections of the 2022-2023 grant fund appropriations, and dispensing with the second reading by title of this ordinance. All right, any discussion? Now, clerk, please go roll. Mr. Vollison. Aye. Ms. Moon Reynolds. Aye. Ms. Sanchez Jones. Aye. Mr. Pretty. Aye. Vice Mayor Cobb. Aye. Ms. White Boyd. Aye. Mayor Lee. Aye. And the budget ordinance passes. Item number F is acceptance and appropriation of the Virginia Brownsfields Restoration and Economic Redevelopment Assistance Fund, Title VBAF Grant. There's a resolution. Move the resolution. Second. Uh, Madam Clerk, can you read the title paragraph? A resolution accepting the Virginia Brownfields Restoration and Economic Redevelopment Assistance Fund Grant from the Virginia Economic Development Partnership and the Virginia Department of Environmental Quality made to the city 
and authorizing the city manager or his designee to take such further actions and execute such further documents as may be necessary to accept such grant. Wait, any discussion? If I can explain this one again as well. Um, so um, th this is through the work actually of Christopher Blakeman, um, who is here to answer any more detailed questions that I'm unable to answer as well. Uh, and what it, what it is is there's actually an old private landfill on this property, which had been completely remade, remediated through the, uh, the state programs. But because of the river um, flowing through there and some erosion, it had actually started to expose some of what was the old landfill. Um, they had approached Christopher, and Christopher's been working with, um, with them, and them being the owners of the property, as well as the, um, the state, um, both the State Department of Environmental Quality as well as the Economic Development Partnership in a way in which to respond or address um, this. He applied for and received um, the, this grant funding, which will allow some of the initial sort of planning work and site work, um, not, not construction, but planning um, efforts to um, be undertaken, and that will ultimately lead to the eventual mitigation that's proposed for the area. The significance of this for us, other than the proximity to the river, is we have a portion of the greenway under construction in proximity of this as well. Um, and so we continue to work with them um, as, the, uh, as they try to remedy this um, issue that was once remedied and trying to correct it again. So. Thank you. And where about is this? Uh, I was looking at where I saw where the, the official tax map number is, but I was trying to get a landmark yeah, as to what is near. It, there's not a whole lot of landmark. It's kind of down near the rail yard. It's probably the Peters Creek in there. Right below, there's Ariel Drive. Okay. Like at the end of, at the end of okay, I know where you're at, Dan. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, it is so not an area. I know where you're at. Yes, that's what I was looking at. I just could not pinpoint when I was looking at it and looking at the rail yard, and I, I was just trying to get uh, a landmark. Yeah, you were not an area that most people would normally be around. Right, right. Really and I was just trying to back. pinpoint. Yeah. But, but that's I, about the change because when the greenway goes yeah. through there, everyone will be going through this area. Right. Yeah. And uh, when, But you gave it to me when you talked about airway drive. Yeah, probably the easiest way to think of it is you're on Patterson at. and you take Patterson all the way to where it ends in the river, across the river. Across that's the river. Where yes, it yeah. I know where you're at with that. That's what I mean. Thank you. Because I kept thinking, what is that? Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? Madam Clerk, can you please call the roll? Mr. Vollison. Aye. Ms. Moon Reynolds. Aye. Ms. Sanchez Jones. Aye. Mr. Pretty. Aye. Vice Mayor Cobb. Aye. Ms. White Boyd. Aye. And Mayor Lee. Aye. And the resolution passes. As a budget ordinance. Move the budget ordinance. Second. Madam Clerk, can you read your title paragraph? An ordinance appropriating funding from the Department of Environmental Quality and the Virginia Economic Development Partnership for environmental site assessments and related planning and development, amending and reordaining certain sections of the 2022. 2023 grant fund appropriations and dispensing with the second reading by title of this ordinance. All right, any discussion? Remember? Hearing none, Madam Clerk. Mr. Vollison. Aye. Ms. Moon Reynolds. Aye. Ms. Sanchez Jones. Aye. Mr. Pretty. Aye. Vice Mayor Cobb. Aye. Ms. White Boyd. Aye. And Mayor Lee. Aye. And the budget ordinance passes. Item G is the acceptance and appropriation of the 2023 EPA Brownfields Assessment Grant. There's a resolution. Move the resolution. Second. Madam Clerk, please read the title paragraph. A resolution accepting the 2023 EPA Brownfields Assessment Grant made to the city and authorizing the city manager or his designee to execute any documents and furnish information on behalf of the city required to accept the grant. All right, any discussion? <laughs> hey, Mr. Mayor, um, this one is a, um, another grant um, that we've received. Um, Wayne, uh, Wayne left, which again in my office, um, worked on, on this application successfully. Um, we've actually, the city's been a beneficiary of this program for probably the last 20 years or so, but we think that this is the largest um, award that we've received from the EPA. Um, it is 100% federal funded, so there's no local match attached to this. Um, it is used to um, for kind of those initial assessments of properties that um, are contaminated in some fashion, leading to um, ultimately the cleanup and, and really focused on phase one, phase two environmental um, assessments as well. We've had many projects um, in the city that actually 
have been redeveloped as a result of this kind of um, work in this uh, this particular program. And um, I'm probably going to ask Wayne if he, Wayne, would you mind coming up here and um, and let him sort of explain. We have to identify generically kind of where we want to focus these, but we have no specific project yet that um, it has, and we have, I think, four years to um, yeah. select yeah, projects and then expand those. That's right. Yeah, good afternoon, yeah. Uh, Mayor, yeah. Council. So, yeah, again, very excited that we were able to receive this grant. This is our largest assessment grant that I'm aware of, and it's a four-year time frame, $400,000 to do Phase one, Phase two site assessments. As we have in the past, we uh, applied for this grant and built it around our HUD target areas. As you know, we focus our HUD dollars, our community development dollars, and target areas for about five years. And so at this time frame, we're in southeast. And so we'll be targeting some of these assessments within that southeast area and along the river corridor. We've done some previous work, brownfield plans to identify brownfield corridors in the city. And there are several couple along the river. Um, we have several sites over in the southeast that could benefit from brownfield site assessments. But ultimately, the grant does allow us to do community-wide site assessments, too. So we can do them throughout the city as projects happen, as, as um, people ask us about the ability to do site assessments. We're able to use these funds to help that redevelopment of sites. Mr. Yes. Uh, just one question: uh, Would this be, uh, would the Riverdale project be eligible for this? It, it very well could be. It's certainly within that uh, uh, project area, and so that's a, certainly a consideration. Um, Mr. May, just have one question. I was looking here where you have your Campbell Avenue and Hollins Road. I was just trying to figure out where about is that corridor um, with Hollins and Campbell. Right, and, and I believe Is it down? you're referring to the, the brownfield yes. plan that picked that corridor. That you have listed in the report where you said Campbell Avenue slash Hollins Road. So that's yeah. where I'm at. I know where Campbell goes down. I was trying to think, is that down where you cross the railroad tracks to go over to Hollins? Yeah, I, I do think that, place? yes, and that's a good way to describe okay. it, too. It okay. is sort of that area, uh -huh. uh, sort of north of Campbell, that, that would connect Where you that if you were to cross the station. tracks uh -huh. and you would go to Hollins. Okay, yes. that's what I was trying to connect it to. Okay, and, thank and, you. And that one was built almost around that railroad uh -huh. corridor, and that's why it sort of yeah. jumps the railroads. And that's what I was It doesn't thinking. make sense on a transportation yeah. perspective at this point, but if you yeah, ignore the boundary of the railroads. Yeah, because I think it goes into railroads. like Norfolk and all of that area. That's right. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? Great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Vollison. Aye. Ms. Moon Reynolds. Aye. Ms. Sanchez Jones. Aye. Mr. Pretty. Aye. Vice Mayor Cobb. Aye. Ms. White Boyd. Aye. Mayor Lee. Aye. And the resolution passes. Uh, there's a budget ordinance. So moved. Second. Madam Clerk, please read the Senate paragraph. An ordinance to appropriate funding from the Environmental Protection Agency Phase 1 and 2 environmental assessment sites on former industrial and commercial sites, amending and reordaining certain sections of the 2022-2023 grant fund appropriations and dispensing with the second reading by title of this ordinance. All right. Any questions, counsel, comment? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Vollison. Aye. Ms. Moon Reynolds. Aye. Ms. Sanchez Jones. Mr. Pretty. Aye. Vice Mayor Cobb. Aye. Ms. White Boyd. Aye. And Mayor Lee. Aye. And the budget ordinance passes. Item 8 is the adoption of a resolution to apply for charging and fueling infrastructure discretionary grant program, CFI program funding. There's a resolution. Move the resolution. Second. Madam Clerk, please read the title paragraph. A resolution authorizing the city manager or, de or his designee to submit an application to the Federal Highway Administration for grant funding under the Charging and Fueling Infrastructure Program and authorizing the city manager or his designee to take such further actions and execute such such further documents as may be necessary 
in connection with this application and s such grant funding. All right. Is there any discussion by member of the council? Yes. Yeah, so um, this is a little unusual in that we don't normally um, ask for resolutions when we make applications for grants. It's after grants have been awarded, such as what we just saw, that we would come back. However, um, in this case, um, to borrow the, uh, the phrase from our city attorney, belts and suspenders here. So we're trying to um, put as many things forward as we possibly can in this application because we will be a small fish in a very, very big pond here. So this is actually a part of the Bipartisan Infrastructure Act that was approved um, in, the, in the last year or so. And there was $700 million approved um, for um, electric vehicle infrastructure charging. First phase of that was actually each state was required to submit their plan, which Virginia did. And Virginia identified, um, among mo other corridors, the I-81 corridor. And so there will be charging stations established along I-81 within set um, periods of time. This is the next phase of that. The second phase is actually to grow out from that, um, that network. And there are two ways you can do it. One is um, through a corridor, um, corridor charging stations, and the other is community charging stations. The corridor um, charging stations require you to have charging stations within one mile of that identified corridor. So we would have to have um, identified publicly owned locations where stations could go within a mile of I-81. The other is community, which allows you to disperse those elsewhere in the community with a preference toward those areas that are um, socioeconomically disadvantaged. So, um, and the idea is to actually disperse the charging then throughout your community. Um, so our, our proposal that we're putting forward in, uh, in the application um, identifies charging stations in downtown um, near the, um, the Goodwill campus, which of course will be the Northwest um, campus with the grocery store and so on, the Berglund Center and the Williamson Road Library. And again, these are designed to be on public property as is required and also um, qualify in those um, areas where again socioeconomic um, status actually gives us uh, some additional advantage in the application. Um, I should say that Roanoke County is also um, filing an application for this, which is, which is great. Um, we are working, all of the jurisdictions are working with the regional commission to um, attempt to approach kind of a, a unified network associated with those. It didn't come in time for this notice of funding, but this program will continue on until dollars are exhausted, so we would expect additional applications to go forward. Um, one challenge with this, this uh, grant is it does require a 20% match. Um, and so in this case, we're requesting $2 million um, in the program, which would require us to provide up to a $400,000 match. I'll be actually talking with you all at the meeting, at your next meeting, about ways in which we can actually build some funds for these kinds of matches and stuff as we um, go forward with it. So our, our request will be, um, any application if approved, we'll be uh, requesting again $2 million dollars for charging stations in at least those four locations as we go forward. So. Uh, Mr. Cowell, will we uh, be pushed to meet the deadline for that application? I know it was approaching very, relatively quickly. Yeah, they actually extended it. So oh, they, they extended did? It oh, into okay. June. Yeah, it was originally supposed to be, I think, May 30, 31st, something like that. And then they extended it up to, I think, June 14th or 15th. Okay, um, that's good. I'll, I'll let Mr. Boyd know he was stressing a little bit. <laughs> yes, yes. He and I have had some conversations. Okay. So. All right. <laughs> Mr. Carroll, when you were talking about uh, the I-81 corridor, does that include 581 and offshoots of 81? It, no. So the state for the state plan, it is only I-81. Um, we certainly um, could use 581 as a corridor, um, at least um, as long as we can identify publicly owned property, mm -hmm. again, within kind of the mile. Some obvious um, options in that case, um, and again, that may be a subsequent application, might be like at the airport, for example, if there's, right. you know, it'd be publicly owned within that area. And there may be a few other locations that we could we could look at as well. Well, if we use 581, I mean, um, the uh, Berglund Center is yeah, and it has to be it has downtown. to be one mile off of 81. Oh, gotcha. Okay. 581 could got be it, the kind of the corridor off yeah, of 81. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you for that. Sure. Uh, where are we, Madam Clerk? I need to call the roll. Call the roll, please. All right. <laughs> Mr. Vollison. Aye. Miss Moon Reynolds. Aye. Miss Sanchez Jones. Mr. Pretty? Aye. Vice Mayor Cobb? Aye. Ms. White Boyd? Aye. And Mayor Lee? Aye. And the resolution passes. 
All right, I'm going to call on the city manager for any comments. The, uh, the only thing I wanted to acknowledge was, um, obviously, this past weekend was a very, very busy weekend um, in our city. Um, we had many, many things going on, um, most notable of which, of course, was the Ironman competition as well as the uh, Sidewalk Arts Show. So certainly want to congratulate um, all of those involved, whether it's the organizers of um, Ironman, Carillion Clinic, um, Visit Virginia's Blue Ridge, as well as um, DRI and others, the, certainly the Taubman Art Museum with the art show. But also want to acknowledge that anytime we do those events, um, there are a lot of city resources that go into making sure those are successful. If you were at any of those events, you likely saw our barricades set up so that we could ensure that the folks that were attending were kept um, safe from vehicles that might try to enter into the area. We, of course, work with the Sheriff's Department and the Police Department works um, in making certain that we have adequate traffic control um, and others. Um, and then, of course, there's a whole array of volunteers that are involved in those as well. So just wanted to acknowledge the success of those events. Had several thousand uh, people in our community um, without incident um, and also um, those that um, worked hard to make sure it stayed that way. So thank you. Let me just say I had a chance to, to be in your VIP tent on yesterday and coming over from parking, from the parking lot, uh, there were a number of people, and especially the participants, just expressed appreciation for the volunteers and how uh, friendly everybody was and the beautiful views in the city of the mountains and, and all those things. So there were a lot of comments. And so what I want to do is to maybe put all of that in some type of form and send it to media over here and let them know that so they can get out to the, get the word out to the citizens that, hey, there are a lot of people that are impressed by the city in terms of its cleanliness and then the friendliness in the city. We're welcome in the city. And uh, that, was com that, that comment was made to me on several occasions on it yesterday. Wasn't, uh, it wasn't 90 degrees, which was nice too. So. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, we're down to item number two now, the city attorney, uh, which is acceptance and appropriation of 2022 opiate settlements. There's a resolution. Move the resolution. Second. Uh, Madam Clerk, please read the title paragraph. A resolution approving and accepting the 2022 opioid settle settlement under the terms of the agreement between the Commonwealth of Virginia and the City of Roanoke, authorizing the city manager or his designee to execute on behalf of the city any necessary settlement documents. All right, any discussion by council? May I just have a quick question for Mr. Powell? Right. Uh, Mr. Powell, when, when we receive the funds, do you have um, a committee in mind or some way to distribute the funds and how they're going to be allocated uh, amongst these agencies that we have so to? What, we, uh, what we've done to date so far is we, we rely heavily on the collective response. So that's actually the regional committee sure. um, that has been, I guess, four or five years now they've right. been working on it. And what they did um, a couple of, I guess it was about a month ago, they presented to us their recommendations oh, okay. out of their blueprint. And that okay. was what Wayne presented to you all, was that kind of list for like the next five years. Now, that was before these dollars were actually, right. were, those do, were these well, dollars incorporated? We've actually, council has already approved the settlement. Right. But what happened is, is this is where we approved the settlement, it went through, and they didn't know an exact figure. An amount. An amount until we knew that we had 100% participation from the state because the higher participation of each locality within a state, the higher your recovery. Virginia is one of two that had 100% participation. So we've gotten the highest amount. Now that we know the amount, this is really about the appropriation. Council's already approved these settlements and already authorized any and all, but this is just the first time you see the actual amount that we've received thus far and we need to appropriate that before the end of the fiscal year so that we can use the money because and, we've already received it. And if you see in, the, um, in your information, it has actually the kind of the five-year plan that Wayne had presented to you all um, last time. So and it, it may deviate from year to year depending on um, the changing circumstance. We'll be coming back each year oh. just like we do with the CIP to kind of update it as it goes along. But just, just as an example, 
some of this, um, some of these funds will be used for um, peer recovery specialists, um, some test strips, um, supplies and training for fire um, EMS for their response calls as well. Um, some work with the Blue Ridge Behavioral, obviously continuing to fund the collective response. There's some funding uh, grant applications for recovery housing, um, as well as a couple of their grants and stuff as well. So, so that's what right now is in that plan. But we do rely heavily on that collective, on the collective response. response. Yes. Okay, I was just wondering who would. I mean, kind of like we did with the ARPA money. You know yeah. how we all got together and made those decisions. And that's, it just seems to be more helpful to make sure it goes to yeah. the right places. And that's exactly what they're doing, okay. is for that reason. So, okay. Yeah. Thank you. This is the money that we've already received. Right. right. Wayne Leftwich, and I know Wayne's getting to be a star today, but he's he's filed an application. There's other money coming to the city of Roanoke that you have to apply to is a through the Opioid Abatement Authority. And the Grants Committee is meeting here, exactly where you're sitting today, in this council chamber on Friday to approve those grant or review and consider those grant applications. So then that will be more money they'll okay. need to be appropriated, but we probably won't receive that until the next budget year, those funds. Plus, we'll still get additional funds that should go up a little bit next year of about 600000 directly that we'll get, and then plus these other funds. So ultimately, once it gets going, I'm hopeful that it will be more, much more per year maybe as high as a million dollars a year. And so Mr. Collett says that, you know, we have to use half on the, these recovery programs. So the other half, is at your discretion? No, there. No. It, it's pretty explicit what we need oh, to do. Okay. If you remember, okay. they, the, the program put together what they referred to as kind of the gold standard, which was as long as we identify projects that fall within the square of the of boundaries of that gold standard, then it's been demonstrated to be in compliance with the settlement agreement, and we have no issues with moving forward. It's only if you try to get out of kind of those edges that okay, you actually have to get special. Yeah. Into so no, it's pretty. It's pretty. Um, though we rely on the collective response to kind of guide us in kind of our local response, the settlement itself is pretty explicit in what we can spend these dollars on. Because remember, these are dollars that are that were exacted through lawsuit settlements that we're actually now. Um, having to ensure that we're spending in accordance with those. And that's not just us. That's across the entire Commonwealth. Uh, yeah, and there I, are numerous standards for each settlement. So if you go by the gold standard, you've satisfied all of the settlement. And plus, we get an extra 25% on top of it for applying the gold standard, as well as ensuring that we've complied with well, all the settlements. I appreciate that refresher, because when I saw the measure and it just said how we had to use the other half, I'm thinking, well, what about the other half? Yeah, and all of that, all of that is <laughs> everything we've talked about is yeah. reflected in that information okay. that Wayne presented. That that five-year plan it takes into account all of that. But again, we'll come and visit that again each year, and we'll we'll continue to build out five years at a time. So. That's fine. That's that's, that's, that's helpful. You also may see more. There's more, because oh. there's a third bucket where we can make application, and the collective response and a regional response has made an application for an additional grant fund funding to implement that whole procedure process. So you may see that, but then those are graded on their competitive grants. So we'll see how that goes. So just one more question, Mr. Cowell. Mm -hmm. Is it because of the repercussions with, with our homeless population in some, in some ways they were impacted, can some of it be used towards um, our homeless? It, it can be used toward treatment and recovery Treat. with them. So that's why so much emphasis is going on the peer recovery specialists and recovery housing okay. um, for those reasons. It, it, it won't necessarily be directed at the homeless population as much as those that are seeking recovery. recovery. Um, piece it, of, but it, they it, certainly are an element of that as well. So, yeah. Thank you. And mm -hmm. may I uh, uh, piggyback on what you just said, Council Member Whiteboy. So that piece with the homeless comes under the community-based where there's community uh, uh, community based opioid abuse prevention treatment and recovery efforts. Mm -hmm. yep. If you use it half of the money, that would encompass yep. those yep. that are needing treatment yep. that are homeless. Yeah, regardless okay. regardless of their housing status. Right. Yes, those individuals. Right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Who's on that committee? Oh, the grants uh, committee. No, he was a collective response. A collective response. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the collective response is actually regional, so that's actually, you. I mean, there are actually over 100 organizations that are actually mm -hmm. part of that collective response. If you remember, 
that's what we're actually using. Some of our ARPA funding is to fund the staff. It's based out of the regional commission, yeah. but it includes representation from um, Roanoke County, the city of Roanoke, Allegheny. Salem, Allegheny, um, a whole host of folks, police, fire, um, hospital representation. There, there's a, a large number of folks that are on that. The grants committee that, that uh, Tim is referring to is actually from the opioid authority, um, which is, of course is the state the state authority that the governor has appointed um, representation on, and they are the ones that make the uh, the award announcements um, for that. So. And that's who's meeting here. The grants committee will be meeting here on Friday. Okay. okay. Well, thanks for appropriating that money. Yeah, <laughs> I love money. Good job. All right. Yeah. Discussions. Any further discussion? Madam Clerk, go ahead and call the roll on this. Mr. Bolson. Aye. Ms. Moon Reynolds. Aye. Ms. Sanchez Jones. Aye. Mr. Pretty. Aye. Um, Ms. White Boyd. Aye. And Mayor Lee. Aye. And the resolution passes. All right, but there's a budget order. So move. Second. Madam <laughs> Clerk. <laughs> we didn't know you didn't. Madam Clerk, we can cut that. Okay. An ordinance to appropriate funding from the National Opioid Settlement for Community-Based <coughs> Opioid Abuse Programs, amending and reordaining certain sections of the 2022-2023 grant fund appropriations, and dispensing with the second reading by title of this ordinance. All right, any discussion? Heard none, Madam Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Vollison. Aye. Ms. Moon Reynolds. Aye. Ms. Sanchez Jones. Aye. Mr. Pretty. Aye. Ms. White Boyd. Aye. And Mayor Lee. Aye. And the budget ordinance passes. Item number B is authorize amendment number one to existing memorandum of agreement between City of Roanoke and TAP for TAP to perform the functions of a land bank entity. There's an ordinance. Move the ordinance. Go ahead, you take it. I'll second. 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 All right, Madam Clerk, read the title program, please. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to execute amendment number one <sighs> to the memorandum of agreement between the city of Roanoke, Virginia, and total action against poverty in the Roanoke Valley, doing business as total action for progress, dated April 25, 2019, and dispensing with the second reading by title of this ordinance. All right, any discussion? Mr. Moran, just a quick comment. Um, mm -hmm. This is going to be, this MOU change is really uh, important to being able to take properties before they get to city, to sac city tax sale. And so I wanted to thank uh, Mr. Collins for his work on this um, and working with TAP uh, to make sure that this land bank that we've been working on is going to be able to be more effective um, and it's a really great uh, step forward. So I just want to say thank you again for your work on this. And uh, Ms. Merritt, if you notice, Ms. Lewis slipped in. Um, so she's back in the back. If she wants uh, to say something, she's back there. She came with us. All right. Do you all want to say anything, Ms. Penn or uh, Ms. Lewis? You don't have to. On, I'm just asking. I just want to say thank you for your support. <laughs> 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 Well, you, you made the effort to be here. We just wanted to yes, recognize you. Yes, yeah. thanks. Uh, Thank you for coming. Vice Mayor. Well, I'm really excited about this, and I also just wanted to ask, are there any other hurdles that we have to address before we can get this started? Because <laughs> I know everybody has been yeah, working hard on this, and I just would hate to see it delayed anymore because yeah, of... I think we're... I think from, a, from a, what we were trying to address through all the different iterations with first the General Assembly and then now this. I think all of those have been addressed. You all may remember also that um, uh, a little over 500, I think it's $560,000 of ARPA funding was provided to um, TAPS, to the land bank, and they've been using that to acquire some of these properties. Hopefully with this, that'll allow that to accelerate um, as we go forward. So I think, we're in, I think we're in the position we need to be, but I'll defer to them if they think otherwise. <laughs> Great. Thank you, ma'am. All right. All right. Uh, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Vollison. Aye. Ms. Moon Reynolds. Aye. Ms. Sanchez Jones. Aye. Mr. Pretty. Aye. Vice Mayor Cobb. Aye. 
Ms. White Boyd. Aye. And Mayor Lee. Aye. And the ordinance passes. Thank you. Uh, before we go to number, number eight, are we going to talk about the juvenile curfew today? Yeah, I thought that uh, earlier today, I thought that we had had it on there, and it's not it's on not there. On so I know we reviewed it, <laughs> but... Um, we reviewed it, and I think we, you and I had talked about coming together with a presentation as well as other things that are being done. Yeah, that was, that was what we did earlier. Okay. <laughs> so I, I had anticipated it being at the end of this meeting. We obviously didn't get it on, so it'll actually be the, uh, the June 20th meeting as we'll bring it forward. It was going to be tied to those, those summer activities we were talking about earlier today was going ahead and actually enacting the revised um, ordinance. You all have already had a copy of the city attorney providing you with that copy of it, so it'll be the June 20th meetings when we'll actually act on it. Well, I was thinking we'd do it before school gets out, and I think school ends this Wednesday, week. Wednesday, this Wednesday, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah this Wednesday. And now, we will be moving, we will be moving the SROs to do enforcement of the existing curfew um, that we talked about earlier today. So we will be able to take that action um, beginning as soon as school ends and they move out of that. Then the revisions will actually have to occur at the June 20th meeting. So, all right, I'm a little disappointed in that because I really wanted us to get this done when school's out because I, I one of the things I want to do was to have a, a sunset on it and that would be uh, June and July, because do you, August. Do you want to sunset on it, Mayor? Well, I, I, that's what I thought we were going to discuss. Yeah, I think okay. part, of the, yeah, part of the discussion was going to be with, since we were linking it to those summer activities, we were going to turn it on with this meeting so that it would be turned on with the school ending. And then the idea was, similarly, around September, we could, in effect, if we wanted to, we could sunset the new provisions so that we would just have it during those summer um, yeah. parts. That was going to be a part of the discussion, I think, that we were going to have here at this, at this meeting. Can, well, can one of us bring it up? Uh, just yes. It. Yeah, it's, I mean, it, the, ordinance is, the ordinance is ready. I think you all have seen the draft of it. So you need a motion to add it to the agenda? If that, that would help me get a chance to go print a copy, and then I've got to hand write. The, we can do that at number 10. Well, if we could, I excuse I'd, me for I'd, a bit, like and then to. I understand there will be a couple of amendments to the draft that went out. I anticipate, and then we can adopt it as amended. Okay, fine. That's fine with me. So while we wait on that, uh, I'll Mr. Mayor, be back. Mr. Mayor, comments and inquiries. Uh, yeah. Well. Yeah, yeah. I do have some yeah. comments. So that'll be in time. Well, we're on. Uh, I was saying we can go on down to. Look. We can go down to item number uh, I got eleven. You. All right, I'll go. We'll move down to eleven one, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, motion and miscellaneous business, inquiries and comments by the mayor, or members of the city council. I do have one announcement, but uh, I always yield to my colleague before I do that. So, Mr. Bolson. Okay. Okay, and I have something, Peter. All right, all right. you all got. Okay, go ahead. Um, uh, Mr. Cowell, I would. Uh, Basically, I would like to see if you could invite uh, Virginia's Blue Ridge to come and present in July about, um, if you look at our agreement for Virginia's Blue Ridge, it's section eight, which is the work program and budget, um, the, which basically states that they'll come and talk to us about the budget, the marketing plan, and what they see for the future. Um, and also, I would look to, look to section number 12, the criteria for success. And if they could also speak on that and show us some, uh, you know, some time uh, you know, over time what's been going on with VBR, um, that'd be greatly appreciated. And I believe, I know the executive committee reviews their budget proposal, I think this week. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure when the board. So it will either come forward as a, I think it'll be a completely approved budget at that point, mm -hmm. or it'll be the draft of what's approved. But yes, I'll, I'll, I'll talk with them about that. But thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay. Before, Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry, we'll be brief. Uh, Go ahead. Before we move on, back to the VBR, um, is, is there any point that we can get an opportunity to have the parties involved review the agreement? It's 10 years old. And, um, you know, just looking at it, it's, it seems like it should be reviewed for any updates yeah. or revisions. 
I mean, it, yes, it is. It's a regional agreement. Yeah, um, right. That's why I said all parties. It's Salem, Roanoke County, and um, yeah. Um, and yeah, let me, if it's okay, sure. I'll mention that to the at the executive committee meeting that's coming up this week to kind of gauge the um, the other partners' sort of response to that, and then we can I can kind of report back on that. So. Okay, that would be good. That would be good. All right, Ms. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, uh, this is for the city manager. Back in September of last year, uh, as you know, under uh, Chris Roberts, uh, when they came and gave the, uh, the presentation, Fletcher Nichols came. And uh, it was part of the gun violence framework. Uh, and it was talking about using resources strategically to assist law enforcement and effectively combat uh, violent crime. Well, Mr. Nichols had recited a royal affirmation. Yes, and yes. from that, at first, council was just going to concur. But it was brought up that uh, we would like to have that in a resolution format to be brought back at a meeting. And uh, I've been meaning to ask for it for some time. And then uh, when I was talking with Mr. Nichols uh, at a church function, that's when it dawned on me to, uh, that we had not uh, followed through on that resolution. So I would like to ask, can we have that resolution sure. come before council so that it can be adopted so that he would have that in hand mm -hmm. to go before the school board? Yeah, I think uh, to get some things done with Antonio the school. Antonio Stovall have been working with him closely on that, mm -hmm. and but I'll definitely talk with with Chris, and certainly we should be able. to Yeah, do because that. I think council did agree that we would do it through mm -hmm. a measure, and yep. for whatever reason, must have gotten dropped or what have you. But I would like for it to come before council, maybe at the next meeting, and just so we can just mark that off, sure. so that he'll have it to do with whatever he needs to do uh, with that in hand. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have an announcement to make on the <coughs> miscellaneous business. Is a council member White Board has been appointed to serve as the chair of VML's Finance Policy Committee. This committee plays an important role in our policy process since finance issues are always front and center with the General Assembly. So I think with her being appointed to that position, we can always realize that uh, Roanoke will be out front on all those financial issues and things that come up with VMA. That's but right. thank you yeah. uh, for your willingness to serve, and it's always good to have people in high places. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I appreciate it. I look forward to, to, to serve. And do we have, uh, is, uh, is it still Amelia or will it be Brent being your staff representative for Roanoke? Right, That's which is still good. Yeah, yeah you got I the bad part of any changes. So yeah. Still, yeah, yeah. As far as I know, Amelia is still. She's still it. That's good. And, and yeah. Are you going down this one? You oh, well, you got the floor. I'm real recognizing you. <laughs> you want to say some more about that? No, no, I don't want to say any more about that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I appreciate it. Looking forward to going to work. Um, I just wanted to remind everybody that um, not this Saturday, but next Saturday will be the Juneteenth Festival at Eureka Park, and it's going to be from 12 P to 5 P because um, we won't meet again. And I just wanted to make sure that people realize that Last year, every year, it seems to get bigger and better. And um, thank the city of Roanoke for their role in helping pull this festival together. I don't think it would come off as smoothly uh, if it were not for the uh, city of Roanoke and their part in, in this festival. So thank you, and everybody, come on out. I'll have a booth again giving away free popcorn. Thank you. Vice Mayor. Thank you. Uh, I have three quick things. First of all, on Wednesday, June 14th, um, we will be uh, having the grand opening for our brand new transit center. Yay! Um, the uh, bus operators did a, a kind of a cold run on um, Sunday just to test out everything in the new bays. And uh, so we're excited about um, that grand opening on the 14th at 11 o'clock at the 3rd Street Station. Uh, and all of the bays and all of the buses will be operating uh, from the new formation starting the morning of June 15th. So I encourage everybody to turn out for that. Um, many of you are aware of the Soulbox project, which uh, is a project that's supported by the Gun Violence Prevention Commission and our artists in residence, Jane Gabrielle, um, 
And right now, this is on display at Valley View Mall. Um, it's in the middle section on the upper floor next to the elevators. And the few times I've been out there, every time I've seen people engaging with it and uh, really exploring it. Uh, this flyer that all of you have a copy of uh, is there and available for citizens to, uh, to explore. Uh, but it's really about raising awareness about how many lives um, gunfire and, and gun violence uh, have impacted. And an opportunity, these soul boxes are a way for kind of a healing mechanism for people to either remember someone they love that, that either died from gun violence or was injured, or to just use it as, a, as an education resource. And because June is Gun Violence Awareness Month, it was a, a, an ideal opportunity for us to have more visibility about this. And then the last thing is our third um, annual Groceries Not Guns will be held on Saturday, June 24th from 10 to 2 at the Melrose Community Center, 1427 Melrose Avenue. And we want to thank um, everyone who's been involved with that, the NAACP, uh, Rona Quaker Meeting, and all of the community partners uh, for their great efforts in bringing that about for the third consecutive year. So thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Good information. Uh, are there any other announcements or miscellaneous business that needs to come before us? Um, Council? I would just remind um, our, our public bodies um, that we reached out to and the directors of departments to um, get in their legislative request to the city attorney by June 23rd, it's like 4 or 5 p.m., so they can be considered on July 3rd in our next legislative committee meeting. Okay, uh, vacancies on certain boards and committees, uh, authority boards, commissions, and committees appointed by council. Uh, and we need to have a certification of closed meeting. Can I get a motion? I move with respect to any closed meeting just concluded that each member of city council in attendance certify to the best of his or her knowledge that only public business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements under the Virginia Freedom of Information Act and only such public business matters as were identified in any motion by which any closed meeting was convened, were heard, discussed, or considered by members of council in attendance. Is there a second? Second. All right, Madam Clerk, could you call the roll? Mr. Vollison. Aye. Ms. Moon Reynolds. Aye. Ms. Sanchez Jones. Aye. Mr. Pretty. Aye. Vice Mayor Cobb. Aye. Ms. White Boyd. Aye. And Mayor Lee. Aye. And thank you. All right, uh, appointments and reappointments. And I will yield the floor to the Vice Mayor. All right, thank you, Mr. Mayor. We have a number of appointments uh, for consideration today. Uh, for the Equity and Empowerment Advisory Board, uh, we nominate Jonathan Lloyd to fill the unexpired term of office for uh, Gerald Rhodes ending December 31st, 2024. For the Human Services Advisory Board, we'd like to appoint Ahandria Brooks uh, to uh, fill the expired term of Laura Leonard and uh, begin a new term. Uh, for the Personnel and Employment uh, Practices Commission, we'd like to appoint Milton Hardy Sr. Uh, to fill the unexpired term of office for Lori Baker Lloyd, citizen at large, ending June 30th, 2025. For the Roanoke Arts Commission, uh, we'd like to point, appoint Lauren Woodson to fill the unexpired term of office for Betsy Whitney, ending June 30th, 2025. And we'd like to appoint Charlene Graves with a residency waiver to fill the unexpired term of office for Whitney Johnson ending June 30th, 2025. For the Roanoke Valley Greenway Commission, we'd like to appoint Barbara Dirk uh, to fill the expired um, three-year term of office for Stephanie LaRue ending June 30th, 2023 and the new term commencing. Uh, we'd like to appoint Jason Cromer to fill the unexpired term of office for Lauren Fennell ending June 30th, 2024, to the Roanoke Valley Juvenile Detention Center Commission. Uh, for the Youth Services Citizens Board, we'd like to appoint Josh Johnson to fill the unexpired term of office for Dina Hackley-Hunt, uh, public-private agency rep, 
ending June 30th, 2024. And Jamie Starkey to fill the uh, expired three-year term of office for Karen Pillis in a public-private agency ending June 30th, 2023 for a new term. Um, that's Jamie Starkey uh, with a residency waiver. And those are all the appointments for today. Thank you. Uh, as the clerk will be calling the roll, if you are in support of all of these uh, nominate reappointments and appointments, please vote by the saying of all nominees. Madam Cook, can you call, <coughs> call the roll? Yes, sir. Mr. Wallison. <coughs> all nominees. Ms. Moon Reynolds. All nominees. Ms. Sanchez Jones. All nominees. Mr. Pretty. All nominees. Vice Mayor Cobb. All nominees. Ms. White Boyd. All nominees. Mayor Lee. All nominees. Thank you. And now the next order. <coughs> Goodness, I swallowed peanut. Uh, is the ordinance amending and re reordaining section 21-5 curfew for persons 16 years of age or younger found in chapter 21 offenses. Mr. Mean is, well, that's where we are. Uh, what's, what should be the procedure we should follow here, Mr. Um, if we can add this to the agenda uh, under item 10 and then consider it. I've also um, created a draft of an addition to this ordinance that I've handed out to council. It would be new paragraph 3 and it states that the new provisions of this ordinance placing additional restrictions on persons 13 years of age or younger shall expire as of August 31st, 2023. If you do indeed want to just have this sunset at the end of the summer, I picked August 31st because it's end of a month. It's easy to do. And if we adopt it in that way, then these new provisions will only apply over the summer, creating those additional restrictions for uh, individuals 13 years or younger. So I move that we add the amended ordinance to item 10. Yes, please. Second. All right. Madam Clerk, did you get all that information you need to? Yes, I did. Okay. Can you read that back to us? I will read the opening, uh, the first paragraph, and Tim, will you will get me the correct yes. measure. We'll get the corrected measure. If council is okay with that added language I just read. Well, that's what I wanted to have a discussion with. A little okay. Think a little bit about that, uh, at least the, the sunset. Uh, so we just need to vote to bring it onto the agenda? Um, just have a, she's going to read title paragraph. Yes. And then we'll have a first and a second, and then you can discuss. Uh -huh. All right. I'll read the paragraph. An ordinance amending and reordaining section 21-5, curfew for persons 16 years of age or younger, found in Chapter 21, Offenses Miscellaneous of the Code of the City of Roanoke, 1979, providing for an effective date and dispensing with the second reading of this ordinance by title. All right, any discussion, Madam Council? Since the, the public had no notices prior to, I would feel better if we at least voted on the motion to put it on the agenda. That, that's still the motion that's before us, correct? correct. You can do that, yes. There's, it's still properly been motioned and seconded. Yes. Um, just if we can take yeah. the role on having it, to, just having it on the agenda, um, I, I would request that the mayor would request that we call the roll on that. All right. All right. Uh, thank Mr. you. Mr. Madam Madam Wallison. Aye. Ms. Moon Reynolds. Aye. Ms. Sanchez Jones. Aye. Mr. Pretty. Aye. Vice Mayor Cobb. Aye. Ms. White Boy. Aye. Mayor Lee. Aye. Thank you. All right. Now, at this time, can we have a discussion? Any discussion? No, I just think there needs to be a motion on now the ordinance. There needs to be a motion, motion to put up the, for the ordinance. All right. Somebody make I a motion. I so move the ordinance. Second. Okay. All right. Title. Do you, Madam Clerk, you need to read that? 
again. I'll, I'll read it again. <laughs> <laughs> An ordinance amending and reordaining section 21-5, curfew for persons 16 years of age or younger, found in chapter 21, offenses dash miscellaneous of the Code of the City of Roanoke, 1979, providing for an effective date and dispensing with the second reading of this ordinance by title. Okay. All right. Any discussion now? Mayor Lee, first I would just um, request that we, uh, if I want to understand, with, with the addition of three, did that move paragraph three to four? Uh, I'd request yes. at least the um, item that's before us that we um, strike the fourth enactment clause of this ordinance that um, allows this ordinance to be passed by only one reading if it has five-seventh votes um, so that um, it, if it passes once today, it still has to pass on the 20th in order to become effective. Am I describing myself accurately? Yes. Okay. So I, I would move that we remove what is now the fourth enactment clause from this ordinance. Where is that? Where well, it, it, right now it appears as three for us right. because yes. three right. is where but he added the proposed the, number three. He's asking to remove the final paragraph that says pursuant to section 12 okay. of the Roanoke City Charter, the second reading of this ordinance by title is hereby dispensed with. And this will. Um, well, first, let me make that motion and see if there's a second. Right. Also, what you're looking at is title of uh, the the paragraph, <coughs> uh, title paragraph where it says dispensing with the second Same. reading of this ordinance by title. You want to remove and have omitted along with, which takes care of the pursuant to section 12. Yes, we remove yes. both those items. Uh, you make it a motion. Yes. I second. Um, speaking to the motion, now it's on the floor. Okay. Yes. Um, the. This will require to come up on June 20th. It also lowers the um, vote threshold um, for it to pass. It only has to get four out of seven um, this time and on June 20th in order to pass. Yes. And it become effective on June 20th once it passes the second time. Well, I thought, Correct. I thought the point was to make it effective. It would be effective immediately, but upon its second passage, which would be on June 20th. Since this is the first time that this ordinance has come before the public, um, this would allow um, the public to have an opportunity to review whatever ends up passing today if something does pass, um, to, to review that before June 20th and provide any feedback. If further amendments can even be made at that time as long as they're not so substantial as to change the character of the ordinance. Um, and it would pass fully then if there's enough votes and become effective at that point in time. Uh, but it yes. doesn't warrant a public hearing, so would it? No, it doesn't. <coughs> no, because you're Ordinances. Yeah. yeah. What happens is under our charter, there are, tip, there are two readings. Two readings. And, so mm -hmm. and we, we always wave. What Ms. Pretty is saying is, don't wave that. In this instance. Have a, in this instance, let's have yeah, a second reading since this was walked on. Yes. Not to put words in Mr. Pretty's mouth, but as no, I that's great. Saying, uh -oh. To allow the, the public an opportunity if they decide they want to come at the 20th and comment, mm -hmm. it has not been adopted, even though it will be adopted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It just allows them an opportunity to have public comment. Yeah, I'm following. I just thought that, that maybe I'm, I'm misreading the mayor's intention. He no, I know he's intended to, yeah. to get it done today because school is going to be out. So, yeah. I, I mean, I'm not speaking for the mayor. Yeah, but yeah, exactly. That's what I was like. Then, then it, it will probably fail if you vote on the motion to remove it. You can vote and say no. It will probably fail? No, no. The, the motion to dispense. If, if you're not in agreement to dispense it, then you just say no. When the roll well, call is called, and then it may fail, then we adopt it as it is, with the motion, uh, with the uh, dispense with the second reading still intact. Well, I thought the whole objective to doing this was to get it so that it can that's be affected today. Yeah. That's what because I school is out. That's that's the whole motion. I mean, that's why we did all this to get it going today because school is out. I thought it was imperative that we get that at that time, and then we talk about the sunset uh, law on it. But that's why we did it. If, if we were going to do that on the 20th, we may not have, probably just should wait till the 20th. But I wanted to get it out because I talked to some constituents about this going on the 20th. I mean, going on the 1st, uh, June, June 5, today. Um, you know, these meetings, I'll tell you, we had two meetings. 
and it's very disappointing, both of them, in terms of the people that came out to say something on them. But uh, I don't want to make this any more complicated than it has to be. But that was my intentions of talking about doing this today. Mr. Mayor, with the most force, you, if you vote no on it, that provision will stay in. But um, I will admit that I will then definitely be voting no on the ordinance as it's presented today. Okay. Well, I, I was I didn't think it would be unanimous probably anyway. But uh, so what do we do, Mr. Spencer? I'm gonna come back to you. Just a roll call. You'll vote no if you want to enact it today and keep that provision in there. You would vote yes if you want to remove it and have it go through a two-step process. Okay. Okay. All right, Madam Clerk, you ready to call roll on that, or do you are you clear on what we're doing? No, I'm not clear, but <laughs> if, <laughs> you'll get there. If I could. Um, repeat the motion the motion is to strike the last provision that's put forward regarding um, pursuant to section 12 of the Roanoke City Charter the second reading of this ordinance by title is hereby dispensed with and subsequently the language that's in the first paragraph um, correct and we would remove and dispense <coughs> with the second reading of this ordinance by title yes yes and um, so we are only voting on a motion to amend this ordinance right now this is not passage of this ordinance correct correct all right is everybody here ready to vote on that yet or is it still clear. i want to make sure we're clear on what we're doing no means no means yeah, you're ready yeah okay to got it, it. Okay. Right. today yeah. Yeah. yes means you want to remove it got it yeah yes is a remove but no is not yes right. means the 20th yes. no means today, today. Okay. Madam Clerk, you got that? Call the roll. I will call the roll. All right. Roll. Well, I get to go first. Yeah, I know you do. <laughs> All right. Madam Clerk, you got that? Mr. Vollison. No. All right. Miss Moon Reynolds. No. Miss Sanchez Jones. No. Mr. Pretty. Yes. Vice Mayor Cobb? No. Ms. White Boy? No. And Mayor Lee? No. Okay. The amendment fails. Okay. All right. So that makes this effective today? If, if it's approved. If it's approved. Okay. Cobb Road. Now, we still have to discuss whether the sunset language that I read, you want to include that. We'll need a vote on that. Good. And then we'll vote on the yeah, the amended as amended. Yeah, as amended. I think you, you did you make that motion? Were you making that one? I, I thought I made that. Yeah, motion. make it again. <laughs> okay. Well, I move that we uh, place the amended ordinance back on the agenda no, it's with the sunset with the sunset, with the sunset clause. Yes. yes. So I got a second. Do we have a second? Second. second. Right. Yes. Repeat the clause. This would be adding new paragraph three, moving current paragraph three to paragraph four, and it would state the new provisions of this ordinance placing additional restrictions on persons 13 years of age or younger shall expire as of August 31st, 2023. And if we could have a vote on that amendment. All right. Mayor, I'll call the roll. Ready, Mayor, call the roll. Uh, yes. Yeah, I'm just reading it, thinking about what, what uh, Mr. Spencer just said. All right, I'm ready. Ready. Okay. Mr. Wait a minute. Hold on just a second. Now, if we say we're saying yes. yes. You say yes, yes to this one. Okay. Yes. Yes. And you're saying yes to a, a sunset provision. Okay. If you say no, you want it in there all the time. It won't sunset. Is it about it? Well, yes is sunset. Um, if I could just ask to, to discuss this. Yes. Um, uh, 
I understand that this would only be for the summer to expire on August 31st for the new provisions that relate to people who are 13 years of age or younger. Um, would it be p possible to get language in here to have a report back of the number of times that this has been enforced then? Yeah, we, we can definitely do it at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the period in which it expired. We absolutely can come back and report um, the, uh, if it had been used in Howells. So, yeah, we can definitely do that. Not necessary for that language to be in here, though. But, but the, to include it in the ordinance, no. is that appropriate? No. No. I was going to say, no. I don't no. think so. You just gave yeah. direction to the city manager. And that's yeah. how I just expected one. We have reports in General Assembly laws all the time. It, it lets you know the effectiveness of things and whether or not you want to move forward with them. But I assume that we can just do it. Um, yeah, we would just we would bring it back at your first meeting in September then, which yes. would be right after it then expires. So. Might actually want to do it earlier. But okay. Yeah. All right, Madam Clerk, now we're ready to call the roll. Okay. Mr. Vollison. <laughs> yes, I was reading yes, here. Yes. yes. <laughs> Moon Reynolds. Yes. <laughs> Ms. Sanchez Jones? Yes. Mr. Pretty? Yes. Okay, Vice Mayor Cobb? Aye. Ms. White Boyd? Aye. And Mayor? Aye. Uh -huh. And the amendment passes. Now we're ready to vote on the amendment. Now we're ready to vote on the amendment. The ordinance has amended. The ordinance has amended. Now we have a discussion about it. No, you got to move it. Oh, gotcha. We've already moved it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a discussion yeah. time. So it's just a roll call. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, can we discuss? Sure. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Discuss it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, want, oh, yes. Do you want to discuss it? Yeah. I, I thought we would discuss it. Is there any discussion by <laughs> among the council? I thought you were going right on into it, man. Yeah, I didn't know that much, boy. I just got one question. Discussion. Um, I'm focused on the construction of the language as the amendment is proposed in A. Um, I, I'm not sure that uh, I understand what the intent is and to focus that for people who are 13 years of age or younger, that it would be 10 p.m. on um, weeknights essentially and 11 p.m. on weekends. Um, with people who are um, 14 to 16, it would be 11 p.m. on weeknights and um, midnight. On weekends. However, just the way that this language was put in here, I'm not sure that it was um, constructed properly to meet that end because, it, as it says, but the original language would have had 11 p.m. to midnight for Sunday through Thursday and then midnight to 5 a.m. every day of the week, which meets the original criteria. But as it's written now for people who are 13 or younger saying between the hours of 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. Sunday through Thursday and then between the hours of 11 p.m. and 5 a.m., on Friday and Saturday, the, the only times between two times are, um, it would be between it'd be 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. Those are the only times that are between. The, the original construction was the right way to have the language um, written in order for it to read properly under the law, and as it reflects in other localities that do the same thing. Um, that was a lot of the reason why, too, I was hoping to have two readings done on this, because I was hoping that this language could be corrected in a way that did not substantially change the character of the ordinance, but allowed it to be read a second time, um, constructed what I would hope be uh, appropriate at the June twentieth meeting. Any further discussion? Do you understand what I said, though? At least I understand where you're coming from, but I do think that that, like you say, the idea and spirit is captured. The idea and spirit is captured here, and there is the nice part that it, it would expire. I just think that the, the cleaner way to have done it was the way that it was originally constructed, and that would have mirrored the other localities in the way that we originally had it. Um, and I would have hoped that it would have been fixed. But no, that's okay. I think we're okay for this period of time. Okay, keep your order. We, we, we trust you. Okay. I, I think my only question was... Um, I know that in the uh, the full ordinance, um, well, hold it. Let me pause for a minute. Okay. I was so focused on the change that I didn't see the rest of it, which, which allows for the provisions uh, that include um, 
accompaniment by parent, uh, emergency errand, mm -hmm. or legitimate mm -hmm. business. Mm -hmm. I think that it's important to reiterate those things. Mm -hmm. that this isn't a blanket right. thing. It, it makes sure that there are situations that um, it's understandable for a young person to be out. The other thing I would say, and I think this has been a practice of uh, the police department, is that we, in, in the enforcement of this, that um, it's not just immediately punitive, but it's you know really finding out what the situation is involving the young person, and making sure that um, you know a guardian is contacted. That, that there, there are other steps to this than just immediate mm -hmm. punitive. And I just wanted right. to, because that that's my understanding from the chief. Huh. Yeah, um, but we would. What we do with this is there's two things. Uh, one, we would continue to use this ordinance as we have in the past, which is the uh, the youth are involved in some other kind of um, illegal or act or whatever it might be, and this is simply added to that. If it's only the curfew and they're involved in it, um, I think what the chief has indicated is that we'll use that as an opportunity to connect to some of the resources that we talked about earlier today, connect into Reset, connect into Chris, Chris and, and others to try to gain um, them access into the other services <coughs> and stuff. I mean, I think that's that's the intent here, is to, and as I understand, and this was said by you all during the public hearings and others, the objective here is another way in which to try to keep youth safe. So that's that would, that would yeah, be the objective. It's not trying to right. result in something punitive, except, again, if they're involved in something else, yeah. then that may be different. Big. Um, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Um, not to prolong it, but uh, I just wanted to ask if, uh, if I could suggest, uh, before we were going to adopt this, you, you had another plan of coming back, is that right, and present out uh, uh, to share with us on, before we were originally, we was going to adopt this at the 20th. Is that still possible? No, it was, it was really what, we, what Tim and I were talking about, mm -hmm. and, and I apologize because I think this got confused well. Tim was out and I was talking with David Collins. I think we each thought something that was different than what we were saying. No, it was actually to be able to sync this up with okay. the other summer enhancements that I shared this morning. Oh, okay. So that's what it was. Okay, I understand. That's, I was yeah. just, okay, thank you. And that was really tied to how the SROs were going to be involved. In right, and I guess that's the piece I would just want yeah, right. the public to know mm -hmm. that uh, that was too yeah. part of this. Yes, yes. absolutely. Okay. Just keeping them safe. Mr. Mayor, just a comment. Yes, sir. Um, I'm going to vote for this today, um, and I didn't really think I wanted to because I don't necessarily think that curfews are um, all that effective. Um, I think that it's great that this is sunsetting and is just for this summer, to, kind of like a trial to see what, what happens, but I would like to see us continue to work on this and work on more about what's happening right after school during the school year and those times that research has shown that juveniles get into more trouble. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. So that's something that would happen maybe in September. Yeah. Uh, after the sunset, when you come back. Yeah, what we, we the other piece ahead. we can add to this is just as we come back and report on the use of the curfew, all those things we identified earlier today about the summer activities, mm -hmm. most of which occur right after, either during the day or right after what would have been school, we can also report back on those so you'll see how the participation that rates were in there. those as well. I like that, that yeah. way I'm yeah. looking at a, the impact. That the impact. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Well, uh, no, no discussion. Are you ready to? Call I have up? a lot to say. Go for before, it. Um, no, if, go if for it. Uh, questions, yeah, yeah, it. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and you know, it's almost less about the curfew itself than it is about the conduct of which we're conducting business right now, which I think is adequately wrong. You know, there was a, a time at the beginning of this meeting at 9 a.m. where we had um, a requesting whether or not to add items to the agenda, of which curfew was not on here before. We, we made no motion then. I understand there was part of a discussion this morning, but I remember looking around even dur during it, we had very little to no discussion on curfew. To, to have this put on at the very end, and I voted in the motion to support putting it on the agenda so that the conversation could continue. I was hoping that it would be voted on twice so this could be a more collaborative discussion and involve the community in some way. We've held, held multiple public hearings, of, of which 
the, an overwhelming majority, if not everyone, has said no to curfew. This is not what we want. As everything I've looked at, it has not been considered to be incredibly effective if, with what we are trying to do. But the fact that we are putting this on today, that my understanding is no one in the public has ever seen this draft that's been presented to us right now, that we have put it forward, that we can't even go through two readings, which our charter requires unless we waive it because we want to do it business this way. We are now ramming something through of which the public had no notice before to know that we were even voting on it today. Otherwise, we could have even just had one person come and say something. There might be something about this that needs to be amended, something that we haven't considered. That that is what I'm so adequately opposed to. I'd hoped to have a collaborative discussion to find some form of this ordinance that I might be willing to support, although my values don't typically support the enforcement of some kind of curfew. But the way that we are conducting business is adequately wrong, and um, I, I will be voting against it for this reason, and I urge my other council members to do the same unless we want to communicate to the public that this is how we plan to conduct business in the future. And, and, and can I just make a comment? Go ahead. Um, I would just say to the public also that this is not brand new, that we have seen this ordinance before, with the exception of the clause to uh, include the sunset. We have had two public hearings and we have had numerous discussions among this council about the curfew so none of this is foreign and it's not like we're ramming anything down anybody's throat because we have discussed it at nauseam we have to talked about it for at least three months um, or more and the people who objected it might have been a people who came to the public hearings, which was not very well attended, to say the least. But we have heard from other members of the community who think keeping our youth safe is more important. And that's what this council is doing, is trying to, to uh, take efforts to keep our youth safe and is only for several months and we've all agreed in the discussion just now that we will see how it plays out and how it uh, it works if it's effective or if it's not and three months I think it is worth giving it a try to see if we are going to save uh, some use or prevent some gun violence or or save a life even um, so I think it's it's a small uh, minor adjustment that is warranted in a case like this Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Oh, somebody else. All right, Mr. Mayor, I'll come back. You can come back to him. Um, as it states here, there is already a curfew on the books. It's in the code. That's right. That, that the law enforcement can uh, enforce at any time. So that's nothing new. What I do support in this is you are putting the age on it. And these are the kids that will probably be hanging out uh, during the summertime where there may be some violence because parents may be doing some things and this helps to bring them in and parents to help, give parents tools to say, I need to make sure my child is in the house. It gives them a time to be out a little later than I would have my 13 year old out. But again, that's okay. So, and it has a sunset on it, which is just for the summer months. So that's my support of this. That is nothing new. It is in already on the books. Right. Yes. Thank you. That can be enforced. And and summer starts this week. Yes. It starts this week, and uh, we can sit here and do the bureaucratic discussions of it, and go through June and through July, and the summer lot. I think I think I I commend this council for taking these steps, because. This is about safety. It's not about taking anybody's freedom. It's about keeping kids safe. We need, in my opinion, not in not this council, but in my opinion, we needed to have done it yesterday or last month, a couple of months. But I, I want to thank the people who went out here. And I know it's not everybody's not in agreement with it, but I think the key point that was made by uh, this council is already on the books now. It's nothing, nothing new we're bringing in the fact that we've had discussions on it. We've been to every part or the major parts of our city. And so you can get bogged down, but when I was elected to this council, me was elected, I knew that there were times that I would have to make decisions that may not be as popular with everybody there, but I'm put in place to make sure our children are safe during the summer. Not to see if a T's and a cross and the I's are dotted. We're going to do that, but I'm going to rely on what our attorney has advised us because we could be discussing this from here on out. I think we want to make sure that our kids are safe. Safety is what I'm talking about, what I've always talked about with this. 
And so school's out. We're going to do this. As it's been said, nothing that, that I'm saying hasn't been said by a council member. School's out, and we're going to give this back to them, but we want to go through at least September to see where we are and how it matches up with the other program. But we could talk and talk, and I think that's why people get so disenchanted with government, because it's a lot of talking, but no action. No action. No action. So I want to take some action today. Because when I look up there and see uh, the things that kill uh, young people, most of them, when you look at it, it's gun violence. Gun violence kills young people it's, it's all across this country. Not only in Rwanda, and I'm not saying in Rwanda, but across this country. Let's take some action on that. The data supports us heavily. The data supports us. And I'm just saying it's time that we take this action to make sure, I hope and pray that we don't have it. I hope and pray it comes back and says, hey, there were no incidents in this city. But I can tell you and, and, uh, that uh, Councilwoman Moon Reynolds and Councilwoman White Boyd and I see what's happening in our community uh, every week. Not a young person, but there's, there's a violent homicide uh, every week. I tell you. And this is the last thing, we were setting up, celebrating the bid up piece, and we had 17 chairs set aside for the victims uh, last week. And, and uh, Vice Mayor was, did a lot of work there, and we saw that. And then all of a sudden, the day that we were celebrating that, we had to put another chair up there, number 18, mm -hmm. uh, was fitted, fitted, made to fit that category. So I'm just saying, let's do something. Let's do something and hope and pray that these things will help us. And we saw a great program by, by young people this morning and uh, by Star City. And, and I'm, I'm just so proud of what we're doing. We got some great things I think are going on in this city. And this will help it even more. I think, in my opinion, you can't put your arms enough around our young people to protect them. And they depend on us. They look to us. The children look to us. We're the adults in the room. And so, anyway, I appreciate the work that uh, our attorney and city manager has put forth in this. You know, we've talked to people in other cities that are doing this. And so, uh, our neighbors to, to the east of us have already adopted a, a curfew. Uh, and so, I, I'm just saying I think we're going to go on and make the decision today and start it today because school is, is about to be out for the summer. Well, Mr. Mayor, with that said, I would just call for the question. Okay. Which means call the roll. Oh. <laughs> Ready, Mayor? Yeah. Can I object yeah. or no? I, call. I object to, to, to calling the that question. That is the debate. Yeah. That is the debate. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think so. I'd like to say one thing, but okay. Well, the question is being called for the question, so we've got to go with that. Uh, Ms. Bank, I'd like the ability to say one more thing. Mr. Wallison? Aye. Ms. Moon Reynolds? Aye. Ms. Sanchez Jones? Aye. Mr. Pretty? Yeah. Vice Mayor Cobb? Aye. Ms. White Boyd? Aye. And Mayor Lee? Aye. And thank you all. Thank you for your Thank courage. You. Courage and commitment. I know the item has passed um, and it wasn't going to change my vote. I was only just going to request, since the public had been given no notice of it and has no access to the language um, in any capacity before, I was going to request that the ordinance be read in its entirety so the public would have some idea in full of what was being voted on before it passed. But I understand that has already been done. And we are past that time. I'm going to ensure, Mr. Mayor, that our two members of the press here will get a complete copy of the ordinance. I agree, and I don't think we're looking for a yay and nay from the public. No. I mean, they can do it, but no. we're not looking for a yay and nay from the public. No. So I think we're beyond that point. It's, it's enacted, okay. but they've asked for a copy. All right. All right. Thank you. Uh, is there anything else to come before the council? Well, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.